what's going on, usual suspects? Welcome to another great episode of the Monday Mid. So it's your co-host Molly Mall, aka I done copped another one, but maybe not today. Um, really excited. I mean, really excited. We got a wonderful guest. It's an honor and a privilege. Before we get into the hey intro, guys, though, I'm gonna pass it to my I main man, Mr. Marks of the Nursing Home. Go to Wix. What up, what up, what up, fam? It's your boy Polos and Jays, aka OG Jay Walker, aka the new AKA Polo to Dunn is coming at you. <laughs> Ready to get this show popping. As, as Maul said, we got a great guest today. So with that being said, I'm gonna pass it over to my other co-hosts with the most, Mr. Mike. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Mike, AKA Mo, AKA Full Size Run. And in case y'all don't know who the gentleman who spoke before was, if y'all have seen different strokes before, y'all never saw Gary Coleman's real daddy <laughs> right there, <laughs> sitting right next to us, co-hosting the night. So, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> pass it over. Pass it over to Dan. Good lord. Ah, uh, what's up, y'all? It's Dan, Daniel, one-legged Lister. I'm your one-legged friend. Maybe your only one-legged friend. I'm so excited to be here tonight. I got some pickups. I can't wait to show you. And I'll pass it off to the man himself. What's going on, everybody? It's Buckeye City Soul, a.k.a. Kev. Um, thank y'all for joining us. Uh, another uh, Monday mid Soul night, and we have a special guest today. Special guest, Jordan. Shoeseum, the man with every shoe that you can possibly think of. Uh, what's going on, man? Thanks for uh, joining us today. What's up, Kev? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Man, man, just definitely... Uh, Definitely glad to have you on, man. And we just kind of jumped straight into it, dude. Uh, so what got you in? Like, you, we know that, I mean, we all know that you have a, a, a gang of shoes, but what actually got you into it? Just like most of us, I was a kid that wanted Air Jordans and wanted the latest, greatest Nikes. And they were too expensive. My parents wouldn't buy them for me. Too expensive for me as a young kid to be able to earn the money myself to buy them. So year after year would go by, and I never got the cool shoes that I always wanted. So what was your first pair that you actually got, and when was it? My first pair of Jordans was the Air Jordan 11 in black and red. I picked them up when I was in college. That was the first time I could actually afford to buy cool shoes. My parents were giving me a little bit of money each month for okay. living expenses, and it was the first time in my life that I had my hands on, I don't know, more than 100 bucks. And I would always take that money and go buy the latest shoes. Damn. And in college, I could barely afford Raymond noodles and a natural light. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, uh, so like I said, I mean, we all know that you have a bunch of shoes. Out of all the shoes that you owned and, and have owned, what's your favorite of all of them? So my all-time favorite sneaker that I have ever owned and still own is the Nike Moon Shoe. And it's actually the very first Nike waffle to ever cross a finish line in the 1972 Olympic trials. It's really like the beginning of everything. Right, I saw I saw you had some um, some stuff on your uh, on your Instagram about that, about actually finding the, the waffle iron and, or, you know, the, and finding the shoe and things like that. Do you, you I, own? Go ahead. Yes, I have a handmade shoe that was buried in bill bowerman's backyard wow. it's also a nike moon shoe it's just a single shoe uh totally handmade it's crazy it looks like an ancient artifact man um, that's... In the deposit box here in portland i have four pairs of nike moon shoes as well as that handmade single shoe and those to me are the holy grails yeah i could i could imagine that's crazy i couldn't imagine even owning anything like that i mean like i wish i still had shoes from when i was a kid growing up collecting but of course over time you never know that you know they're going to be you know worth anything you outgrow them and you get rid of them and you know i wish that there was someone that you know was a, hey you know hold on to those you know but you know it, it yeah. is what it is so how do you like how do you get like all these like obscure shoes like all these shoes that you know i mean i remember shoes like the um I think you had the the air light what was it the air light low it was a scotty pippen shoe i saw you do a video on it 
Um, Air flight light low, maybe. Air, yep, air flight light low. Like shoes like that, are, like a lot of people like probably would never even think about. But I remember as a kid, like he, I think he had the black and the white ones that he he'd wear, but you could never find them in the store. Um, like, how do you get your hands on shoes like that? So, so let me like take you back and get you in my mind when I was building the shoes. Okay. So, I was just like any other sneaker collector. I had my favorite shoes. Like, I didn't have this crazy comprehensive collection of everything. I just had like what were my favorites, and then I had this idea to build and curate the most comprehensive collection of Nikes in the world. And so basically what I did was I went back all the way into childhood and I was thinking of all the pivotal shoes and all the cool innovations and all the signature models and not just the signature models, but like the big name athletes that wore Nikes, like Scottie Pippen, for example. Right. You know, so you take someone like Scottie Pippen and it's like, okay, we all know that Scottie Pippen eventually had his own signature shoe, the Air Pippen. Right. But before that was the Air More Up Tempo. And before that were shoes like the Air Flight Light that you're talking about, the Air Maestro. Right. Shoes like that, you know? So I would sort of like create a catalog, almost like a checklist. Like when I was a kid, I used to collect baseball cards and basketball right. cards. And I loved building sets. And at the end of each set was like the checklist of like all the cards in the set. When it came to building the shoeseum, being the checklist, and then finding the shoes. But I was really building the collection at a time when there wasn't so much hype like there is now. And there wasn't a ton of people so thirsty, like looking all over the place for the shoes. Like they were there. It really only took me about two years to build the shoeseum. Wow. Like even though I've been collecting for 10 or 11 years, it was like from the time that I got the idea in my head to build out that collection, it, w it was like a two year process of just constantly scouring eBay and flight club is really where I bought most of the shoes. Okay. So like, do you, do you have the, the shoes in open where people can come? Cause I, I remember seeing a video where, or I think I may ever remember hearing like rumors saying that you were going to stop having people come in or, uh, but you know, how does that, how do you work that now? Do you still, uh... right, so the shoe museum no longer open to the public. Okay. I opened it up in October of 2010 in San Diego. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's been almost seven years to the day, which okay. is crazy how time <laughs> just flies by. Yeah. But I, I opened it up in San Diego. It was there from 2010 to 2011. Then I moved it to Vegas where it was open in 2012. But it's been packed up since then, okay. and I've been selling off the collection, except keeping my prized pieces, like those shoes that we were talking about at the safe deposit box, and some of the stuff that I brought here to share with you guys tonight. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, like when you when you had the uh, when you had the shoes in in operation, like what kind of security did you have to have? Because and a lot of us, I mean, in the you know in the Instagram Instagram and YouTube world, I know that um, uh, CJ so cool just got robbed. Um, and then also um, Tony D, they took his uh, his wheels and his rims and things like that. And the people that are, you know, you know, viewable on YouTube, you know, like what kind of security did you have to have in order to keep people out of there after, especially after let, allowing them to go through the shoes in? Very good question. Uh, in San Diego, actually, the shoes were just sitting on shelves, shrink wrapped, but they weren't even behind glass. Oh, like wow. you could literally go right up to them and pick them up and i had a policy of like hey don't touch anything mm -hmm. and people were very, very respectful of it but still they were like right there for the touching and for the whatever tampering yeah. fortunately i never had any problems with that I mean, that's awesome. when i moved to las vegas though it was a different story because i knew that the shoes needed to be behind glass like i couldn't be everywhere all at once mm -hmm. in san diego I gave tours, like a three hour tour to about 20 people at a time. And it would be me and somebody in the back of the pack keeping their eyes on everyone. And it was manageable. But okay. in Las Vegas, it was a big giant warehouse that was like open to people that they could just like walk through and peruse. Uh -huh. So everything was behind plexiglass. But even still, I was terrified. I would walk people through there. Oh, here's the M&M fours. Here's the Ooh. undefeated. Here's the Nike Mag, the Paris Dunk, all the Supremes. 
three pairs of what the dunks. You know, I mean, every shoe you could imagine. Here's a stage with 600 Air Jordan retros right here. Boom. And then we would close the place up at night and I would go home like that one of those people that I was walking through was going to come back with their homies and they know exactly where to go because I just showed them everything. Yeah. And I used to live right next door to the Shoeseum in Las Vegas, like across the street, right across Las Vegas Boulevard. And in the middle of the night, I had overnight security watching the place. Mm -hmm. But I would wake up at like 2, 3 in the morning and walk over there just to like look at it and see if the security guard was doing his job. Nine times out of 10, the security guard wasn't even there. Wow. And the Nike mag was like right up in the front of the shoeseum because I used to say like, hey, I'm going to take you back in time through shoes. So, you know, yeah. here's the <laughs> That's awesome. But I was always like, I would turn the corner coming towards the shoeseum, like holding my breath that that shoe was still there every single time. Because like I knew if someone was going to take down that place, that'd be one of the first things that they would hit. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, I think that like people like me, I, I get weird about going on vacation and typically people don't find out I've gone on vacation until I'm already back just because of, you know, I mean, I grew up, you know, I had a system in my car, you know, somebody robbed it a couple times and then, you know, so I'm real cautious about, you know, stuff like that. And then I, I just, I can't stand thieves, but, um, you know, you honestly have to be overly cautious. Um, cause one careless move and you never know, you know, and it's not just that you could get your stuff taken. Like someone could hurt or kill you. Right. Right. Yeah. That's... And people are crazy with this kind of stuff. Yeah. People still pin caps. I mean, it's, it, I mean, it, it'll still anything. It'll still hubcaps. It'll still, I mean, it's, it's stupid, but I mean, you know, it, I guess it is what it is. These are the days. That, um, but um, I, actually, Daniel was, I was talking to Daniel. Hi, about up at the front of the shoe. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you. go ahead, man. Go um, ahead. The shoes DM was run by me, my wife, and her parents. And in addition to the four of us, we had a security guard up at the front of the shoes DM who mm -hmm. was like, couldn't even take down, like, <laughs> I don't even know. And he had a wand, like, to wand people to make sure they didn't have weapons or anything. But honestly, it was like just for a show to, like, show people that, hey, like, we're holding it down in here, even though. We weren't at all. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm to, I got this flashlight, top flight security of the world. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, the museum had glass that went floor to ceiling, probably like 20 feet tall. And I would lock these two doors up and put, like, a chain around it, like it even mattered. Because someone could take a rock yeah, and, and just, just, like, throw bust. it right through the glass <laughs> and see it in. And I'd still, like, do everything I could to lock it up. Yeah, that's... That's crazy. So, like, how much of it left do you have? I mean, and are any of them size 12? <laughs> <laughs> so, the Shoeseum had 2,504 pairs on display. I currently have about 300 pairs left. Wow. So, I've sold, like, I don't know, almost 90% of it. Yeah, you the whole collection is in my size, which is an 11 to 12. Oh, I'm, 12? Right. I mean, speaking of 12, it's like, I don't mean to... Oh man! But these are OG dead stock, size twelve, black That's and red ones. Crazy! Like, what's something like that cost? I mean, those are. What is that? Move it. Dang! I picked this up for about two thousand bucks. And I mean, those I've are still wear proponent. still wearable. I think that. I'm sure they are, but they're dead stock, so I'm not trying to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm Look just at saying. That toe box. <laughs> yeah, that's. Yeah, so the whole collection was in my size. That means that a lot of it's in your size too. Size hey. 11, 11 and a half, 12. Well, then, let's talk. You know, here and there, you know, you're gonna get get rid of stuff. You know, 12. Holler at me. Like 11. <laughs> and, and Mike, uh, so Mike, have... Mike wears any size, so. I'll take Mike seven and a half to 15. 12. 12 and a half, 13. <laughs> you sound like those guys at the campouts, like, like back about two years ago, when you'd go wait in line at the mall for shoes and everyone would be checking out each other's sizes. You'd be like, hey, what size are you wearing? And some people would be like, eight, eight and a half, nine, nine and a half, ten, ten and a half, go through the whole size. Mm -hmm. Whatever you got That's left. It, Never sell a size Ret you can't fit. Retractable toes. <laughs> so Daniel, Daniel was talking about, um, he said that you had some um, interactions with Tinker. Uh, tell us about that. 
So the Nike executives flew down to the Shoeseum and visited me. Mark Parker, Tinker Hatfield, wow. Sandy Bodecker, Michael Lemming, Nelson Ferris, Rick Shannon, uh, Eric Sprunk. It was like the tippy top of the Nike pyramid. And after everybody left to go back to Oregon, this was when I was in San Diego, Tinker actually stayed behind. His daughter lived in San Diego and he was waiting by the Shoeseum for her to come and pick him up. So I ended up going to the airport and saying goodbye to the other Nike executives and then came back and Tinker was still there. We got to hang out and talk for probably 20 or 30 minutes. Okay. And ever since then, we've kept in touch, um, mostly through email. But I did have an opportunity to have a meeting with him at his office, which is in like a top secret part of Nike, um, oh, the innovation kitchen. Ooh. We had an amazing conversation. I, I was telling Daniel a little bit about it. He shared something with me that I really hold near and dear still to this day, years after he told it to me. This is the context of the conversation. So Tinker came and he checked out my collection, 2,500 pairs of shoes, all the shoes that he had created and designed. And along the way, he said to me, you know, I've never collected any of the shoes that I've designed. Like, I don't have any of them. What? He said, actually, I have one pair of Michael Jordan's cleats from when he went to, like, play baseball. But I didn't hang on to any of them. And that sort of, like, blew me away. Like, I was really taken back by it. Um, you know, this, so this was at the Shoeseum. We had this conversation. Then I'm in his office, and I was talking about not only the fact that he doesn't collect the shoes that he created, but also about the fact that I've always wanted to work at Nike and that Nike has never given me that opportunity. And I was very upset about it and lost a lot of sleep about it and wondered why and why won't Nike give me a chance. And I brought this up to Tinker. And he said, you know, Jordy, we all have our place in the ecosystem. And your place is that you built the world's first sneaker museum. And maybe your place isn't necessarily at Nike. And mm -hmm. it really resonated with me. And it made me realize that I don't have to have that job at Nike. And that I can be very proud of the path that I've paved for myself. And I can continue to hold it down as the owner and the curator of the world's first sneaker museum. And, you know, it's not just about like, we all have our place in the ecosystem, but you kind of want to like play that part, like fill that role. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. like who are you in this space and what do you want to be and emanate all of that on social media? So I don't know, Tinker gave me a pill to swallow that made me be able to accept not getting that job and to also accept and embrace my unique role in all of this man that's that's awesome man. i couldn't i couldn't imagine that so did you so did that i mean make you want to i mean do you ever what's the word i'm looking for do you ever regret selling off most of the shoes in like do you ever want to just have it back and and do that again or when i started selling the collection it was very difficult for me the shoes mean so much to me um, I'm very nostalgic and sentimental. Mm -hmm. So whether it's like the way that I acquired the shoe or, you know, what was actually achieved in the shoe or the shoe itself, I found myself very attached to all of the stuff, but I think it was necessary to sell off the majority of it because it gets to the point where it's just like hoarding and it's impossible to keep up. Nike's been continuing to retro and remake every single thing. And all these retros, they're not sacred, you know, like I'm really proud that I was able to take a lot of retro and general release shoes and build and curate something that I feel is much more special than the individual building blocks themselves, which are very much replaceable. Right. Right. Man. So let's get, let's get into your, um, to the Dame Dash collection. I mean, most of us know, or people that don't know, uh, you know, uh, usual suspects, he's got Dame Dash's collection. Well, he was actually selling it. And I think he said the, la the last day of it was yesterday. So he was, you know, packaging things up. Tell us how you got, um, tell us how you got hold of that and, you know, how that went about. Cool. So 
I moved to Portland. I live like right on the cusp of Portland and Beaverton. Like literally, Nike World Headquarters is a mile away from my house. You can oh, practically wow. look outside and see it. And since I've been here, I've been helping people sell their collections. It's mostly people that work at Nike or that worked at Nike and they've acquired or amassed a lot of things over the years. And I help them sell their stuff. Okay. This guy reached out to me from New York who was originally a customer of mine and just, you know, would buy sneakers from me on eBay or Instagram. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Jordy, I've got this crazy collection. You're not going to believe it. And I was like, okay, tell me more. And he was like, you know who Dame Dash is? I was like, of course, you know, <laughs> yeah. and, and I know his collection because he starred in that DVD just for kicks that came out like probably 12 or so years ago, mm -hmm. which was about the intersection of sneakers and hip hop. And he was on there, showing off his shoes and in his office and whatnot. Anyway, this guy in New York acquired Dame Dash's whole collection of stuff. It was 550 pairs of shoes, a bunch of platinum records and awards. I mean, just crazy. And he was sending me pictures of all of this stuff. And I was like, man, we got to sell this stuff. We got to make certificates of authenticity that this is Dame Dash's. I'm going to reach out to the director of Just For kicks and get 600 copies of that movie one to go with each shoe i reached out to my friend who's a graphic designer and he created these certificates of authenticity that look very professional and we rolled out this campaign for 10 days where 60 items were being listed each day 600 auctions and i mean it was crazy some of the stuff that was in there he had a pair of undefeated dunks the original samples that there were only 24 of supreme Jeez. dunks it was like a snapshot of what it was like to be a sneakerhead like 12 or 15 years ago. And then the wow. Platinum Records, which like today I wrapped and shipped over 100 packages, including about 10 Platinum Records, and they're insane. I'm used to wrapping shoes, and that is easy compared yeah. to some big, like crazy friend. Let me show you. Like, yeah, definitely. This is my favorite of the Platinum Records. It's a five times platinum Space Jam platinum record. And you can see Michael Jordan's on here, Bugs Bunny. And there's one, two, three, four, five discs because it sold five million copies. Man, that's crazy. So this piece right here went for $5,000. Um, let me show you. Hang on one second. Sure. This is like <laughs> what they look like rap. Oh, man. <laughs> I swear, it takes me like an hour for each one. He's like, oh, we sold another one. So, yeah, so that's uh, that's how I was spending my day today, was wrapping the last of Dame Dash's shoes and the plaques and certificates. So is it all gone, or you have, like, some, some leftovers, or...? I'm looking out at a few things that are still waiting for payment to come through, okay. but this was actually round two where I right. relisted the stuff that didn't get paid for or that didn't sell the first time around. Okay. And most of it will be gone. It's yeah. crazy because, like, everyone assumed that I was selling the collection for Dane. Yeah, I, but, I, that's what I thought, too. And, like, I, I didn't even think that that was going to happen. I was just like, okay, here's 550 pairs of shoes. Okay, like... They're cool. Some of them are cooler than others. But what's really cool is that these are Dame Dash's right. shoes. And so I felt like as a storyteller and as a sneaker collector and a sneaker reseller, I felt it was completely necessary to do like a whole package and a campaign that these are Dame Dash's and the certificate in the movie. So Dame actually addressed the selling of his shoes on an Instagram post where Cameron brought it to his attention that all of his stuff is on eBay and he wanted to like set the record straight that he wasn't behind selling his stuff and that he's got stuff all over the place in offices and cribs everywhere and he just like lost track of his stuff. Okay. So he wasn't like hurting and then had to the people from um storage what was that what's that show called? Storage, storage Wars. Wars. Yeah. <laughs> Come up in there and uh, Ivy and all them take his stuff and, and put it up. But that's cool, man. That's, you know, that's... I did, yeah. When I got the collection, I didn't feel it was my place to say, this came from storage and Dame Dash lost his stuff. 
I thought that would be really bad and really negative. And I thought it would be better to say this is Dame Dash's collection and he's a mogul and a legend and an OG sneakerhead. And now you can own a piece of it. And I just wanted to portray him in the most positive light ever. Yeah, man, that's a, that's a high road. That's the, that's the road I like to take. I mean, I might take a, a detour today on Instagram, but, uh, you know, typically I like to venture on that straight and narrow. Uh, but let's get let's get into the to the band Jordan and let's talk about let's talk about that and then I will um, I will show the people you know whatever whatever you bring up I'll, I'm, I'm gonna show the people so let's let's get into that all right cool so I mentioned that since I moved here I've been helping Nike employees sell their collections and from time to time they'll have a piece where I just can't sell it like I just got to buy it myself uh-huh. and that's the case with this newsletter right here that I'm hoping you can pull up. This yep. is an early newsletter about Michael Jordan that was completely internal to the people at Nike. Uh, the thing about this newsletter is that it actually says that the Air Jordan 1 was not banned by the NBA. And not only that, it goes on to say that the NBA actually liked the Air Jordan one and like being cast in the commercial for as like the people that banned it, even though they didn't ban it. Yeah, I can, uh, let me. So let me read a little bit of this newsletter. Is that cool? Yeah, go ahead. So Michael's talking about the first time he wore his shoes. He says, the first time I wore the shoes to a practice, my teammates thought they were ugly. They had never seen anything like them. Eventually they all wanted a pair for themselves. His teammates weren't the only ones who were slow warming to the red, black, white design. The good folks in the NBA front office threatened Jordan and the Bulls with fines if he continued to wear them. Nike immediately jumped on the controversy with a TV commercial. So here's the commercial. On October 15th, Nike created a revolutionary new basketball shoe. On October 18th, the NBA threw him out of the game. Fortunately, the NBA can't stop you from wearing them, Air Jordans from Nike. But here's where it gets good. Actually, the shoes weren't banned. I mean, wrap your mind around that. This is Nike saying right here, in writing, in black and white, actually the shoes weren't banned. The NBA requested the colors be changed to match the Bulls team colors. Clashing, it seems, is a technical foul in the NBA. Nike was quick to comply. For its part, the NBA didn't mind being cast as the heavy in the commercial. And here's a quote from the NBA. It gives exposure to Jordan's rare talent, and that reflects positively on the NBA, said Terry Lyons, NBA spokesman in New York. So I met this guy out here, and I helped him sell his collection of more than 200 items. And he was one of the original 10 people that worked at the Air Jordan line. And he had this newsletter. And I saw it, and I read it, and I was like, "Man, I need to just buy this from you." Yeah, man, that's that's crazy. Cause I, I, I mean, I didn't even know. Like, I didn't know it was up to that. I mean, I, I thought that they were banned, or they were, you know, just, you know, they were. Uh, was there? Were they finding them? But I didn't know that they were actually cool with it. Just like, I mean, you know, we kind of talked about that a little bit before that. But I mean, that's something that you know that nobody ever knows, and. Uh, you want to get into the uh, the to the differences? Um, I can pull that up. Yeah, for sure. So I, I brought with me my game worn Air Jordan ones. This is my second favorite pair of shoes in my collection after that original pair of Moon shoes to cross the finish line. They're size thirteen and thirteen and a half. Let's go to the. Hold on one second. And I also brought an OG pair, the released ones that came out, so you can sort of see them next to one another to see the difference in the height. Like the released pair, the black and red one, mm-hmm. is much taller than the mid-top PE. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, also, if we can zoom into the numbers on the inside of the collar here, I, can, I sent pictures, but maybe you can see them here too. I can, uh, you know, it has the size, size 12, and then the date that they came out 08, 10, 85. Yeah, I got it. And so this is like on the OG pair. And if you compare it with the 2011 band pair right here, these are the ones that released at the outlets. 
You can see we've got the date that they put on here, 10 18 85. Notice that it says 85 when actually dressed 10 18 84. And by the letter, I mean the letter from the NBA. So I've also got that here. I don't mean to be like jumping between shoes and no, letters cool. and all that. Um, but I also printed out a letter from the NBA. This isn't the actual letter, it's just like off the internet. You can print it out. Right. And it references the shoes that Michael wore on October 18th, 1984. So it's sort of interesting that the band pair that was released, and most of them were marked B grades, and maybe it's because of the date right there yeah, that they got it wrong. It. By the instant B grade. <laughs> you know, what I think is interesting about this shoe, here we have back in 2011, and Nike is continuing to perpetuate the myth of the shoes being banned. And then over here, I have the remastered 2016 pair where they also have the date on there but this time they got it right with 1984 instead of 1985. I was at the Nike employee store just the other day and they had the Air Jordan 32s in black and red mm -hmm. and I picked them up for the first time and I looked at the outsole and it had the date 1018 on there. And then the fact that they're black and red and people are calling them the band edition and then they say band on the inside of the tongue. I was like, man, this is all wrong. Like this is just all wrong and it's gone way too far. And to act as if everything that's black and red is now like the band edition or whatever, when actually the shoes weren't even banned to begin with, it just got me really thinking about this newsletter that I picked up probably a year and a half ago or so. And I knew that I was going to be on this show tonight with you guys. And I was like, man, it's time to just break this newsletter out and share it. with people." Yeah, man. I, I definitely appreciate you doing that too, because I mean, you saw the, the band on the 31s um, as well as the 32. So that's probably what they're going to start running with. I mean, I don't think they really picked up on the bread as much, um, but they may start, I mean, they're going to put X's on everything. Who knows, man? You know, on this topic, we can't talk about it without giving a shout out to Marv, mjo 23 Dan. Oh yeah, I know he's been on your program before. He's the foremost expert on the history of the black and red Air Jordan One and the Airship. I mean, he even created a petition for people to sign to get Nike to retro the Airship. And if there's anyone in the world that wants them to tell the story straight, it's him. Um, he's a friend of mine and. I don't know, I just want to mention him and the story that he wrote for Soul Collector for the 30th anniversary of the shoe. I think in 2014, he wrote the story and it keeps getting rewritten and yeah. republished. But you can check out like the true story behind the band shoe. He, he wrote a great story about yeah. it. Yeah, Mar Marvin, definitely knowledgeable, man. Real cool guy. We, we definitely were glad to, to have him. But let me ask you this question before I open it up to the panel. So, I mean, you, you've seen the airship between the airship and the, the, you know, the Jordan one OG, as we know it, which one do you prefer? That's a great question. I love the air Jordan one because it's so iconic. That being said, when I was living in Southern California, SCP auctions got a hold of a pair of Michael's game worn airships that he had given to a ball boy. SCP was located like two and a half or three hours away from where my wife and I lived. And I was like, baby, we are driving to the coast. And, going to <laughs> and I called up that I called up SCP and I told him who I was and that I wanted to come through there and do some YouTube videos and help them promote the auction. And they bit and let me drive out there. And I had in my hand the airship that he wore in October of 1984 against the Lakers. And that was just crazy. Like, and the ball boy was super cool, super humble. He was saying that when Michael handed him the shoe, he was originally disappointed because he wanted it to be the Air Jordan 1. Then, of course, he <laughs> later appreciated it for what it is because it's like the prototype of everything. Right, right. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on board with you. I mean, it'd be, cool, it'd be cool to have a pair of airships if they re-release them. But as far as wearing them, I mean, you can't beat a, a, a nice bread OG1, man. I mean, that's... That, I mean, that's my preference, though. But let me open they it up. Better. They look it? better as you wear them. I mean, yeah. in, I've been wearing this pair for 16 years. It's the 2001 edition. And 
I love it. I actually yeah. haven't even broken out any other black and red ones since. Like of all really? the ones that keep coming out, I just keep wearing these ones because there's nothing wrong with them. Yeah, and I like the way they look when they're beat up. I think I've got the 2000. Is it 2012 and 2015 or 2011? What I have two of them and I kind of interchange them. I like the brightness of the older one over the the you know it's more of a deep red on the new one so i typically will wear the the brighter red but that's me what's your favorite shoe all you guys what's your favorite shoe my favorite is the bread four i mean because that was the first jordan that i ever got but i mean nostalgia mine is the, uh, mine's the aqua eight the aqua eight mine is the black cement three that was my first cop back when I was a little youngster, my first job, so that's always been my go-to shoe. Damn, you had them OG back in '88. Yeah, I did. My first, <laughs> my first, <laughs> check, my first check, security check. My first check when I at my first job. That's the first thing I bought. First job. That was that first social security check. Stop playing. Shut up. Uh -oh. <laughs> drink your, drink your answer. You're the most OG of all of us. <laughs> that I am. Uh, mine's probably the playoff 11 followed by the black cement three the black cement three only because of the history the fact that it was really the turning point mike was on the way out that brought him back in and the rest is history yep mike concord 11. yeah i love the concord 11. yeah, yeah that'd, be, that'd be in my top three yeah concord 11 is definitely my second that's it's my, up there yeah, all it's... respectable choices for sure yeah, definitely. So, you guys got any questions before we get into pickups? He actually, uh, he addressed one of them, but I will expand on it. Because my question was, do you ever buy the things that people bring for you to sell? And I know you bought the letter, but what other, what other, what's the list of items that you're like, you know what, I can't even, I can't list this. This has to stay here. There were a few pairs from Dame Dash's collection that I kept for myself. He had some CEO Air Force Twos that Nike made for him. They put his name on the side of them. They weren't released to the public. And he's shown in the Just For Kicks documentary, holding them up and saying that he wished that they made those for the public. That's so awesome. those, um, I don't know, inevitably, I always find something, at least one thing from each collection. I think it's part of just being nostalgic and being a collector. Yeah, because I feel like I'd have the same problem. Like, ah, oh, yeah, these, these are sitting here. <sighs> we know you would. It's not a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I got this old Nike raft, an old Nike picnic basket, awards and statues that were given to people for being like employee of the year. What I got this oh. one statue that's like three feet tall of the Greek goddess of victory. It looks like it belongs at Caesar's palace or something. And it's like so solid. So that was another one that I picked up along the way. There's really a lot of cool, unique, obscure stuff up here right around Nike World Headquarters. Actually, there's a lot of people that thrift around here and even Nike employees that get off of work and hit up the thrift shops looking for stuff. Man, I'd be out there all the time. Why does it say that might be a Mende Mitzel, uh, <laughs> Mitzel trip? A pilgrimage. <laughs> yeah, there. Anybody else got any questions? Nope. Well, let's let's get in the, let's let's get in the pickups. I'll go first because I got nothing uh, once again. Yeah, yeah. Listen, be careful. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's a full moon, I, I, you know, a blue moon, something. Or, I got nothing this week. Nothing actually came in. I have zero. So I didn't cop another one. Nothing today. Sorry. Well, this is the first time in probably over a month that I've, I've got cops and I was kind of forced to pick up some shoes. This one, I walked into the store and they were sitting on the shelves and uh, it was at Foot Action and I had a $20 off coupon. So I had to have them. I was going to get them regardless of the $20 off. So I picked those up. And at the same time, Oh, Roll Love told me I had to pick these up. So uh -oh. I grabbed these. And uh, this, this is a dope shoe, man. I, I love I love this shoe. I don't remember what I said I when we first back. talked about this shoe. Yeah, I don't think you liked them. I think you, I, you I probably did. asked it. I, think I, I don't you. think I asked it. I think I you think did. I you, I don't think you I probably asked, asked it. You said they were poor. Like you said they were poor yeah, man. You know, poor man's fact, PSNY 12s. That's what you said. And as that, a matter I, of I didn't say that. <laughs> fact, you, you you were talking about how they were gonna bleed, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. Oh, they gonna bleed. I already got they the 13th. I already got the 13th. I don't need them. They gonna bleed. I mean, it's, 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 I, 
And I did say that I, I, you know, I would prefer a gum bottom on. I think a gum bottom on these would have been dope, man. I mean, no, I like the white yeah. better. Yeah. I mean, the white is I'll nice, but back it, it's going to get super dirty. There's no man. rush. It's going to bleed, but, but they don't, man. It's dirty sweet. It's not leaving the house. <laughs> <laughs> there you go with that foolishness again. Hey, man. I, you... I left the house today, and I wore my, my infrared uh, sixes. Today, I, don't like, you. You need more I got them on my feet right now. Damn it! You can you can uh, you and can use one house. of those uh, soul shields from <laughs> Rejuvenator. <laughs> he checked the mail and let him. That's it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? What blows my mind about those Bordeaux twelves is you take a a dope silhouette. Don't get me wrong. The Air Jordan twelve is sick, and the fact that it can be released in a new color that's seasonal and popular in suede and it's just like the latest thing that everyone gets so excited about i like to take a step back and think about the different air jordan models and the colorways that actually have released and if you think about like the color spectrum like if you go to your local hardware store and you go into the paint department or if you go to like the polo part of a department store and look at the standard two button polo shirt and they have every single color every single material and it's just so crazy how much opportunity there is out there for Jordan brand to just crank out these silhouettes one after the other in so many different colors. And the latest one that comes out is always the one that everyone's so excited about. And the, the hype that they can create for them, it just blows my mind. I mean, really. Yeah, they keep coming with the, the I'm glad, I mean, a lot of people think that they're lazy by coming out with different colors, but I look at it as when I was a kid, I would have thought it was crazy dope to have different colors uh, of things where you only got maybe you know from two colors to four colors to you know things like that so now we get you know a bunch of colors now except for those uh, up tempos those more up tempos they could have stopped doing probably you know they, they made a hundred of those things there's too many of them. Take, like like <laughs> let's take like the air jordan five for example okay and in five. the last few um, months it's come out in blue suede and red suede, among a ton of other colors too, like the white cement ones, you know, that pay tribute to the fours or whatever. But like, take a step back and think about all the fives that have come out, okay? Yes, there's the super exclusive T23s in yellow. And yes, there's the super exclusive Oregon fives in green. But really, they've never made that shoe for the masses in yellow or in green or in orange. Like there might be that mellow, like, soccer club exclusive that's orange but that's never been made for the masses all of these shoes if marketed properly are instant sellouts and that and suede okay what about leather or what about new buck you know it's like the the options are infinite and that's where nike can bank on oh we're gonna get to 50 billion you know and wall street is talking oh we're so worried nike's not going to be able to reach their projection targets their numbers of course they will. All they have to do is make threes, fours, fives, and sixes in whatever color, in whatever material, and we'll be down with them. Right. Yeah, good old uh, Unbox Mike got the uh, Tokyo, Tokyo Tokyo Fives. What's your pickups, man? I only got two. I got, uh, just like Molly, this was an accidental pickup, so... <laughs> I got these uh, blue mist. That wasn't no accident. You went to StockX right after I showed mine. <laughs> yeah, you do no, do so, that. As he always does. Yes, he always. Does. Hey, he's uh, he's Hansel and Gretel. You drop the you drop exactly. the breadcrumbs and he follow you up. <laughs> All the time. So listen. So I looked. At I gotta that, get those. I looked at that and the Cool Gray fours. The problem was because of the age, I was just worried about them cracking. So then when Molly was telling me, "Hey, I'm gonna massage it. I'm gonna do some other stuff." I put a bit out there, but I did look at these. I still want the cool grays, but those were what, oh, oh four, something like that. Oh four, yep. I, I might pick those up this week. Because... Yeah, but I'm worried yeah. because Tokyo, I mean, not the, the Tor Yellows cracked up, and I mean, they're what, oh, oh four, oh six? Well, fours are Ooh. always going to crack. Yeah, I mean, fours well, are going to crack. Work out plan, yeah, you can and buy it's... fours brand new, and they're going to crack, man. You can't, you can't yeah. be afraid of that. I mean, they, my bread, as soon as I bought them and wore them twice, they cracked. So that's oh, more stance cool. socks, less church socks. Oh, that's my recommendation. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, whoever, if, whoever wants to sponsor me, I wear whatever socks y'all send me. Um. <laughs> ain't, that how you got that Viper? Ain't, that, ain't that how you got in trouble with Sam Viper? <laughs> hey, man. I didn't and get then I got, uh, I didn't get in trouble. I had my eyes on me. 
Okay. And then uh, I saw Ben, ben post them up, so I went ahead and pulled the trigger because the price Wait, was again. See, there you go. Wait, hold up. Did you? I said I was looking at these. They no, were no. only one fifty dead stock. And then when I saw Ben, I was like, okay, I'm gonna go check them out, and I got them. Yeah, well, don't, 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 don't be a, don't be a follower all your life. At some point, you gotta be a leader. Okay. Well, I mean, he did get the Tokyos. Nobody <laughs> nobody has the Tokyos. But the reason only reason why he got the Tokyos, Kev, remember we had a show and we talked about the Tokyos, and everybody was just like, man, I would love that Tokyo. We Wait. gotta get the Tokyo. The next day, <laughs> the next day, he texts me. Let's you know, there's no backup. The next day, <laughs> he texts me and he said, man. You said something about them Tokyo Fives, and I want them Tokyo Fives. Ooh. I'm gonna sell half my collection to get them Tokyo Fives. So I got a text. Let's, you can have a text. <laughs> the Tokyo Fives. First of all, my size never. I love yellow. The, the size never I comes up. The price was lower than what I've seen. So to actually have my size at that price, it was a no-brainer. I haven't seen that that size and that price yet. So I, I, I got to pull the trigger. <sighs> Damn, God bless you, man. Listen, with God bless you. most of the stuff I have, I'm not getting most of the stuff everybody is. Jordan, man, you have any pickups? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, whatever you want. <laughs> We're about to make it a segment. <laughs> this is why I have no pickups. I had to make sure we had enough airtime. <laughs> oh. What's, what's up, the 97? Yeah, those are the Sawaski. Sawaski, Christo. Those are our Shout out to Ella Esco, the master of air. She hooked it up for my wife. Wow. That's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. Those are dope. Now are that good. would not get worn outside the house. Never. Next week, Michael have a pair. My wife that I want for myself, I tell her I bought these for Yumi. <laughs> <laughs> Yumi. <laughs> Along with the bowling ball and the vacuum <laughs> <laughs> That's silly, man. <laughs> So, my turn. Yep, it's your turn. All right. Yeah, he has mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> I am. I'm excited. So I got, I got these. Um, so these are the Wave Wave Six Sunrise. I got these from uh, the Edition Boutique. Shout out to them. I'm really, really excited about this pair. Really excited about it. Uh, is that is that pink? Is that pink? Oh, he got you. Is that pink? Yeah, it is. It's pink and purple. Oh, okay. It looks okay. like a sunrise. Okay, go ahead with your girl shoes. Let's go. Uh oh. <laughs> Bitch, you wear. Oh. 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 It's still early, man. It ain't, it ain't after hours yet. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, I made it to eight forty-seven. All right. And then I also got things. the um the PG EYBL. Uh, <sighs> Molly, sorry, Molly Jaws so. tight. So I hate you. <laughs> I got so. Yeah, these right here, these Sockanese. Ah, that's Sockanese. the Tony Wild, right? Yeah, I yep. thought I thought you said you didn't like him. He, uh, I just didn't like him. I when said I, that he gave him to me. When 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 I had mine, I didn't think you liked him. No, I didn't say that. Oh, I thought you said. How tight is it by the way? Took me to reach out to all the YouTubers and that, right. let them design. That's, that's, that's awesome. That's what's cool. Um, you get nice. You Damn, like I think that? you said it though. <laughs> uh, <I don't> know. <laughs> He's not gonna say so, that. <laughs> I got, I got these. Finally, mm. and, uh, and what? Uh, let's see. I got these guys. Uh, LeBron fifteen, the ghosts, which I love. They're super comfortable. Make those disappear. And I got this one Ooh. to finish up the rest of my Atmos pack. So I actually got the box and the the Jordan three to go with it. I didn't think you liked those. I, I didn't think you liked those either. These guys. Damn, dude, you're buying a lot of shoes, man. Yes. You're right here. Playing today. He's making up for last finally, week. Finally, 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 finally have the shoe in the deal. So, yeah, right? We got them. So, um, I had no pickups last week, and it was mainly if you can't hide money. Um, so, I had no pickups last week because a lot of my money was tied up into doing this. Um, two of these shoes came from me getting rid of GRs and picking up the um, the Don C's and the Atmos 3 and then actually like paying my taxes with that money so I was able to take the money that I saved it from my taxes and pay get some other stuff so it worked out really well so those are my pickups nice nice 
All right, so you guys ready to roll into the gap? Weekly releases? Oh yeah, that's right. Dang, we going we we back we back we back behind, man. Come on, Marcus. Oh, you don't want who who to do the show? Marcus, let's right. go. Come on, come on, Marcus. Hold on, hold on. I'm just yeah. messing with you, man. Get that insure up. Get yeah, I'm your, not an old man. Take the insure. He, he got a one stuff, man. Uh, 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 can't deal with the technology. All right, so we got a couple of Adidas coming out. We got this Adidas Ultra Boost, the ATR Mid Oreo, another Oreo colorway. I'm not mm. feeling the sock liner. Them look like Ooh, Newt, Newt Rockney. <laughs> <laughs> the Gippers. <laughs> All right, and then we got another Oreo colorway in the uh, Ultra Boost X. He's not bad. They're not bad. For the latest. Mark is somewhere. Oh. <laughs> no, you don't want always rocking Ultra Boost, so. Uh oh. Then yeah. Nike has their own Oreo coming out. Paper Max 2.0 Oreo. 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 I don't like the black on the black on the Paper Max. I like to be able to see through. I need to get some of those Paper Maxes and try them. They're all right. I'm, wait, I'm waiting on the DBs. The DBs are sick. Yeah. I want to start with. Yeah. Those are the ones I want, the DBs. The ones you got the, the Nike Vandal High, the Doc Brown. I'm not a big Vandals fan. No. You're missing fun. out, dude. Really? I don't. I don't. Look I had him as a, I had him. I had him. I had him as a kid. I mean, like I had. Didn't they have like a Terminator? They had the <laughs> silver. Yes. <laughs> they're, you're missing out, man. They're like the cousin to the Air Force One, to the Air Jordan One, to the Dunk High. See, I like the, the one. Term- I like the Air. Jo- I like the Jordan ones. I'm not a huge fan of the Air Force ones on me. I just think that the bulkiness. I like the. The Jordan ones are a little bit slimmer. I don't know. Those silver vandals, the OG ones, they're so iconic. These Puma shits that are on the screen are horrible. It <laughs> looks like they're trying to go do they're something like, like Nike Special Fields a little bit. It kind of looks like uh, a like a Yeezy 900 low light version. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> he got money. It's not bad for a Puma, though. It's not, it's not horrible. I've seen worse. Oh, yeah. But, you know, Marcus <laughs> likes uh, Balenciaga SSS. Of course. So I like Balenciaga, period. Ugh. So then we got some some Supreme uh, Nike. I can shoot. Gross. They're That's throwing gross. Supreme on everything. It's going to sell out regardless. Oh, yeah. You know what's crazy? Like, they can collaborate with Supreme or Undefeated on any shoe and then create hype for the shoe after that release. Like, People will be down with the Hamara just because of the Supreme Hamara. And, and you know, like we've seen it happen before. Now they're taking like the Air Jordan 16 and 17, which are like less celebrated silhouettes and making things like Soulfly exclusives, Trophy Room exclusives. And all it does is like sort of bolster that silhouette when they do retro them in OG colors or like new colors. Yep, exactly. Here's a all black pair. That one's not too bad. I mean, I still wouldn't buy it, but it's, not it's too fucking bad. trash. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is trash to you. That's two. Oh man, yeah. swear jar. And then, and then you got the Nike LeBron 15 Ashes. These these are all right. I mean, they they don't you know. Why ash- ashes? Why ashes? That's like Oreo. I mean, that's a, that's there's a, a there's a flame on the uh, on the so like on this part here so. Uh, where it says 15 there, there's like a, a flame there. Or if there, it's on the back somewhere. I don't know where it's at. It's all in the picture. Way. Daniel, do you think they made that ghost color right with Halloween and like people didn't put that together? Like, ooh, the ghost is coming out for the week of Halloween? I don't think, I could, I didn't think about it until you said something. <laughs> right this second. Right this second. I'm like, ah, oh, that makes sense now. I was like, why do they call it ghost? But, you know. Maybe. I thought it was because it was like it was like his shoe line was returning from the dead, you know, oh, and man. the the rising from the ashes, like Steph Smith said right there. I like Phoenix. the I like the fourteen. Uh, I like well, yeah, the thirteen. Uh, I had a problem yeah. with. We'll see. Then we got the Air Max OG Anniversary Game Royal. I will be Why going to be like that because this is say. one that I gotta have, man. I missed it. And I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. You got oh, two Air Maxes. I'm gonna go ahead more and isolate. I got more than two Air Maxes. Three. I got more than two Air Maxes. Stop counting my shoe. Three. <laughs> yeah. Mine will be here. Wednesday. You didn't. You didn't. You got like, like five of everything. You didn't like them. 
That's Why you true. always bringing up old shit, man? Because they were my you gaps, your, man. Uh, He's like, I don't like, I don't like Air Max. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't ask something and then, you know, yeah, he be playing the game. Yo, I'll do it all the time. He's a dollar bidder on uh, Price is Right. <laughs> Daniel asked the 16s recently, and then he was trying to cop a pair. So what's the difference? For you. For you. <laughs> I was trying to cop them for you. Whatever. You, you would have kept them. You would have kept no, them. No, I would not have. I cannot wear that shoe. Any, anybody want to see any of these port wine colors? It looks like they're all women colorways. No. Because they're all for women. No, you can go to the 13s. Matt, Where? The GS uh, Bordeaux. Yeah, I don't need them. Wouldn't need them if they were in men's. I would probably cop if they were in men, probably. And that mean yeah. right they after the 12? Like they came out a while yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And these, y'all not feeling these, oh, but man. I, I, I kind of like these, man. These no consortium. way. I kind of like that. that. I, mean, I don't like that. Yeah. I hate shell toes, man. I can't stand. Man, what? That's that's you know that's that's what I wore. The back wing, the wing tips. You got them bowling shoes, man. <laughs> you like you can, you like you can. The things it. make my soul go soft. You can bowl a turkey in them joints. See that 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 shows how new y'all are into the sneaker culture, man. This was the shoot the web back in the early '80s, man. Y'all don't know. Yeah. DMC. You go to a Run DMC concert. Yeah, and well, I see, you stop trying to relieve the '60s. You could go, you know, get you some Helen Keller boots. <laughs> uh, gross. All right, so what we got next? All right, we're going to get into the gap, but first. Oh, we skipped releases. What? We just did releases. Yeah, Man, I'm not going to 47 releases. Curries that are coming out. An hour into the show. The Curries? Yeah. The, All right. The, All right. the breast <laughs> awareness one was shown today. Sneaker Room put that up. DD pointed that out. What's okay. that? Oh, the breast cancer awareness? Yeah, the, uh, the three pairs, okay. They uh, showed them today, finally. You got the white silhouette, the black and pink, and the all pink. Yeah, the air air get money, I think is what yeah, it was. They're all really, uh, it's, it's it's a nice collaboration for sure. All right, so we're gonna get we're gonna go ahead and get into slide on into the gap. But first, a word from our sponsors at eight and nine, um, and then also we have it uh, in the in the description of the show. So if you want some eight nine gear, there's a there's a, a code in there. You can check it out. Make sure you use that link to take you right to the area in which that uh, code is usable. So uh, eight nine. Real quick, real quick, Dan, before you get into your little monologue, I do want to correct something that was uh, was mentioned about that ghost pair. I just had witnessed the Kings, a.k.a. Ron Jr. hit me up. The whole concept behind the ghost pair is the fact that LeBron had mentioned that we're all chasing ghosts. I did hear that. Uh, be, that's dope. Be an MJ, that's et cetera, et cetera. So that's the whole concept behind that pair. Especially on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, so welcome to your favorite part of the show. It's my favorite part of the show because I get to do most of the talking. Welcome to The Gap. So this is a game that we play on the show. Please feel free to chime in in the comment section. Give us a gas, you know, a little gas pop, or you can say gas or flames or whatever. You can give a little peach, or you can say ass, or you can say pass, which I don't know. We can maybe do the, the gas emoji, whatever. Um, so the way this works is you get two points for gas, zero points for ass, and one point for pass. All right? And what the topic of today is, a uh, topic, but the, the gap topic thing, category, is GS shoes that we wish came in. What are you doing, Marcus? Exercise. <laughs> Why are you doing this? What kind of exercise is this? <laughs> He's finished. He does it at at the the bathhouse. So, anyway, um, GS sizes that we wish came in um, 
men's sizing so that we cop. And we're going to start off with the Raptor 5, which is whose shoe? It's mine. All right. All right. All right. It's Ra- mine. <laughs> Raptor 5, um, I mean, it's a, it's a clean 5. Um, I dig it. Uh, there's not too many GSs that I, that I really care for. So this was one that, you know, I would definitely rock if, uh, if they came in men's. So I'm going to guess it. Um, I will also guess this one because I love fives and I don't have a lot of purple. So I'd be down for that. So guess for me, Jordan. I'll ask it. <laughs> That's yeah. fucked up. Oh, no fucks, baby. I love it. OGs yeah, over everything. Ooh. Well, well there's right. no OGs in kids' shoes, really. Yeah. 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 Damn, damn, anyway, damn. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Maul, what you got on on the, uh, the Raptor five? Listen, I think it's a dope colorway. We've seen it on the sevens. Uh, but for that reason, I don't need the five. So I don't need the Madden style when one play works. So you keep doing it and doing it and doing it. I'll stick with the sevens. I'll pass on the five. All right. So you don't have one. So you, you don't have any. You don't have the cement. Kevin. You had a cement fives. You got them for free. Well, you wear them. <laughs> you, I mean, you still wear them. I wear them? I mean, if they came in. From, five cement. You know, cement company. threes. All right, man. Whatever. That's cool. That's why I went for. <sighs> Uh oh. <laughs> my, my, no, take some tape. You about to ask everything. You having gas issues? I'm gonna just pass on them. I'm I'm not a big fan of the purple. That's why I don't have the any of the grapes. And I love fives are my favorite. Um, I just don't really like the, the purple personally. Um, so I'm I'm sorry, Kevin. You are pink and not purple. Man, what kind of funny are I you? I just don't like. How... <laughs> I don't know. I just, I'm just not. Fearing. All right, man. Next. No, I'm sorry. Next. Uh-oh. Marcus. Marcus. I'm, I'm just going to pass on them. I mean, they're not horrible, but I wouldn't. I mean, if they was in my size, I wouldn't. What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? What you talking about? Yeah, what, you, what, you, what you talking about? What you talking about? Pass, pass, ass. Why did you say that? Because you know he's going to go buy a pair. No, I ain't, no, I ain't buying them. I don't, I'm not doing that. So, Kev, you got a pass from the usual suspects. Fuck yeah. So that puts Kev <laughs> with a grand total of eight. You can't talk to the usual suspects like that. I talk to everybody. Next shoe. <laughs> All right, hold up. Steph Smitty, please don't talk to other men. Last chance. That's from Pino. <laughs> <laughs> Pino jumps from reading. woman to woman every week. I mean, it's a different chick every week. It's like Pino. somebody else I know. Pino, stay away from my girl, okay? <laughs> All right. So now we have what are these guys are called? The linens. The linens. Oh. Um, who's that? Who's is this? That's uh, that's Mo full size run. That's mine. All right, go. I can't like he don't got a pair. I don't even need. To. Hey, you know what? The to- I told you the toes were rusted, so they ain't retracting. But um, yeah. I mean, what more can you say? The white, you know, like a nice summery look. You just can't go wrong. I don't even need to speak on. It. It's gonna be gas across the board. So. Let's get it, fella. Let's get really? it. Gas it and get the win this week. Just let's just get because you said stand. Just because you said that. Let's get ready. <laughs> WWE, I already had that earlier. Oh, I'll be used to this. Get it cracked. <laughs> Round two. <laughs> he got a six Y. Let's roll. All right, Marcus. Marcus. I'm 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 gonna gas him. I mean, I had them when they originally when they originally dropped back in the days when they went up to like a I want to say it was a women's thirteen or fourteen or something I don't remember size one two yeah I, I like the shoes so yeah, yeah women's shoes yeah I got a, I got a few I mean oh man you got high heels like, uh, <laughs> you know, like this for example is a is a women's shoe ah, yeah. and a women's colorway let me and, guess I got those because of you too right I mean I don't know I mean I don't even know if I put these on IG hey you mean, wearing Victoria's Secret. <laughs> Red ball. Hey, you just mad. As long as they you fit men, right? Right? Am I right? All right, Kev, what you got? Uh, I'm gonna pass on these. I, don't, I mean, there's not enough color. I did get the uh, pure platinum or pure pure money, uh, but that was only because I thought about doing a custom on them. But I don't like. I like. I need more color. So, pass. <laughs> I, I, this pair is a gap for me because I do like this pair. Oh. Um, I would like, I think it's as clean as a clean colorway, so I would have liked to get this, but, you know, 
they don't make them in 13s no more. So you can go and get the old. Was it 2006? I think they came out. I don't do it. I'm not doing it. Let's see. But yep. Next, Jordy, what you got? I'll pass on them. They don't do it for me. That's cool. a pass. Boom. <laughs> then you got <clears throat> Maul. Uh, I was going to pass on them. I actually went back and forth. I think I like the Lit and Tens a little bit more, um, but I'm a sucker for fours. So if this came out, I probably would scoop it. So I'm going to gas it. You're going to gas it? Okay. I will gas it. I was going to pass it, but I'm going to gas it. There we go. I didn't think right. the heart last cool. minute. So that gives, with the gas from the usual suspects, that gives you a total of 12. So next up. Uh, I love your usual yeah. suspects. We have this shoe. It's a shoe. Um, Lord. Who's is this? Who's is this? this uh, Marcus. I can't even see it. Go ahead, Marcus. Is this the Vashti 2s? I picked this shoe sure. because... Shut up, man. I picked this shoe because uh, this was the first <laughs> shoe that was designed <laughs> ever. <laughs> you didn't play over here. You didn't play. I mean, I, I don't, I don't care. I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't pick this shoe to please everybody. I picked this shoe because of the the meaning behind it. Oh, fuck no, baby. I can ask it all day. Don't nobody know the story behind it. I mean, this was the first shoe that you know Jordan Brand allowed a female to design. That's why I picked it. So while y'all asking and passing and all that, know your history on your shoes, because I'm sure. 99% of y'all in the damn chat didn't even realize that. But, you know, it's all cool. Oh, we so, yeah, I'm going to give it. I mean, you might have known that, Maul. But the chat, I'm sure didn't know that. They don't even know who she is. Go look up. Go follow on IG. B-A-S-H-T-I-E. Go, go check out. But I, I love this shoe. I mean, would I rock it? No. But I, I think it's a dope shoe. No. Wait, hold on. Cool. Don't, don't. Right, cool. Anyway, uh, Kev, Kev, what you got on uh, on this shoe? Ask Shut up, Pino. Four weeks. I don't like the look of it. I don't like <laughs> it, man. It's trash. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I only, I, I don't like the look of it. This <laughs> is, um, I, this is cheeks, yo. <laughs> Negative. <That's nice>. Um, <laughs> I, I, Jordy, what you got? <laughs> Thought boots. <laughs> Um, oh, so it's a, because you don't have the YouTube pulled up, so it's um, a two, a Jordan 2 with a silver midsole and a purple sole. It's got a light pink suede upper with pink out, or purple, dark purple outlines. It's the Vash T2. It I'm sounds perfect for my daughter. It's lavender. It's the Vash T2. <laughs> all these shoes will be perfect for your daughter because they all GSU, so I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's the theme of the week. Well, my daughter's going to be one on Sunday, so she's oh, not quite oh. a GS yet. She's not a toddler. Yet, not yet. All right, so. I'm not these for my daughter. Are these, a, are, these a, are these an ass or a pass or a gas for you? Well, I don't see them, so I can't say. So I'll just pass. How's that? Oh, you got Okay. You got over right, you got oh, a a market. I was going to text it to you. Maybelline next. 2. Hold on. I'll take yeah. a picture so, of the screen. And then so, I'll... yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, come, we'll come right back to you. Ma, what you got on these? Well, these shits are ass, bro. The story is great, et cetera, et cetera, but when it comes down to the final product, they should have never made uh, past production. Someone's got to got to veto that trump card. History. Like, no. History. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Damn the rest of All right. Uh, yo, uh, Mo, what you got? I am i don't know if it's because it's the picture or if they're really that bad. They, I, it's not the best picture, so for <laughs> me, I got, I got to give it some ass, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I feel bad too because you actually gassed me for once. But you're always giving up the ass, so I mean it's not. Oh. <laughs> you know what? Fuck your shoe, uh -huh. ass all. That's that's usually what you be all up in the ass. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. <laughs> I'll, I'll, that ass. I'll pass on those. All right. So Thanks for Marcus, walk, yep. <laughs> Marcus, Marcus walks away with a grand total of three. <laughs> Next up, because the, the it's suspect. all there, black and white, suspect. clear as crystal. You get nothing. Like you lose. Anything. Good it's day, like, sir. A cool story or whatever. But uh, nah, dog. I gotta, uh, I gotta find this thing. Hold on. It's... You, you get nothing. Nothing. 
right, let's go to. All right, who? who? All, right. All right, hold on, here we go. The hangout. So, it's what's gonna happening? Take... There we go. All right. So <sighs> next up, we have eleven. Where is it at? Where is it at? Eleven Lou Pink. It, it did match Willy Wonka's vest though, like for sure. Okay. <laughs> It's a great we have this eleven low snake skin. That would be mine. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I, I actually I love this shoe. <laughs> I would wear the hell out of it. I got my daughter these shoes when she was like one, and I, it kind of killed me that I couldn't rock them with her. I'm probably not gonna be popular amongst the group, but that's okay. I'll stay in my own lane. Um, all right, so that's a guess from Maul. I still don't see Mike, what you got. It's a it's a pink snakeskin eleven low. It's a pink snakeskin eleven. Low. It's a uh, what's it? A sand viper. It's not a sand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> according to its creator. Uh, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to ask these. And, and the reason <laughs> I don't, I don't like how low eleven lows look on my feet. I bought, I had the cherries, I had the, uh, you know, the gold ones. I sent them back. And then I also don't like the snakeskin. The, the pink is cool. But that's the only thing I like. So I'm, I'm sorry, man. I gotta, I gotta ask you. Well, when your real size is 15, <laughs> you got a hoverboard on your foot. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna give him a, a, a gas. This is another shoe that came out back in the days, and it went to extended women's sizes. And uh, I didn't get to cop it back then, but I would if it dropped today. So it's a gas. Yeah, I want my cousin to get hers. I'm kind of mad. It's, at a, it's a gas. Okay, cool. Yes, yeah, a gas. All right. All right, Kev, what you got? Ass all day. Of course. Of course. Kev Jeez. don't even count, bro. Thong panties. <laughs> Thong panties. <laughs> um, so the comment section, I'm looking. It's it gets looking no like, gas for me. It I looks see. like gas, so. though. There's a lot of gas. There's a lot of pass, too. But... I see a lot of pass. I'm not seeing all the gas. Yeah, maybe, my, it's, maybe, up, it's up higher. Maybe mine's broken. But um, so these are a pass for me. Like I just, it's a pass. Like it's just not. If they came out, I don't even like the snake skins at all. I mean, they're not bad, but I don't like the green ones with the black. I don't like the snake skins. It's just not for me. So it's a pass. Um, and the comment section is gas. So you get uh, two. So you're walking away with seven. Did you get Jordan? Yeah. I'll give him a Next. pass. I like them. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You gave him a gas boom, so that's nine. My apologies. I'm sorry. It's okay. That's I'll nine. get it over it. Maybe. Ma walks, <laughs> Ma walks off with a nine. Next up. All right. Next up. Now, just to be clear, we have two shoes coming in from Shoesium. So, Jordy here. So, Jordy, these are. I'm trying to figure out how he's getting ready to do this. So, we have. <laughs> the worst piece. Yeah, we I have just that wanted to win. I'll do two shoes. Yeah, so um you get an average. <laughs> yeah. So you, you get the average, so we'll go like <laughs> so uh yeah, those people in the usual suspects, what's that say that crystal word? Because I can't the, we get the crystal air max ninety sevens. Right, so right. Swarovski. 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 Yeah, I can't say that. Yeah. And then we have the the hip dunk low pinks. So make sure, yeah, there you go. In the comment section, make sure you identify gas for the Air Max, and then gas ass or pass for whatever for the hip ducks. Swaro, Swarovski. 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 Okay. So, uh, Jordy, what you got? Oh, those are, those are pretty. Those are pretty. How ill is this? It is. Awesome. It really is. Swarovski. Uh, okay. Marcus so, Jordy, what you got? On your- what, what, what you got yeah. on me is that gas, boom. All right, for yes. both of them. And then, and then the second one, your um, Dunks. boom. There, your hemp low pink ducks. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got to get it out of the bag. He secured the so, bag. Take the hemp out the bag. Secured the bag, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot, you got to add the eight. Awesome. Hey. All right, so, um, Ma, what you got on the two? Um, we will we'll gas them both. <laughs> he said, what's that, peanut candy? <laughs> <laughs> gas on both. We'll gas on both, yeah. Ooh, sneaker RX. Okay. 
You got Mike, both? Mo, what you got? I'm going to gas the Air Maxes. I'm going to ask the Pocahontas ones. <laughs> what do you mean, man? You ain't got to be no. mean. I can't do that. But the but the but the but the, the swivel, whatever you call it, uh, those are nice. Swarovski. Yes, <laughs> you can't gas it. Public schooling. <laughs> the, the diamond looking kits. I'm the gas. The uh, the uh, the panel. We can't. <laughs> Marcus. Can't All right. Well, I'm gassing the '97. We talked about that earlier. I'm gassing those. And the corrective shoes, I'm assing those. <laughs> <laughs> so you get past. All right. Kev, what uh, you got? I'm going to gas the Swarovski. Swor- <laughs> just, just say the Air Max. Oh, man. Jeez, and I'm, man. Gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to ass the strawberry oatmeals. Um, so <laughs> that's going to equal a pass. <laughs> Strawberry oatmeal. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> All right, so I'm going to pass on the Air Max 97s, oh. and I'm going to gas the Dunk Lows. Um, he's trying because to be I like different. dunks. He's trying to be all eclectic in here today. <laughs> I do. I like dunks. Man. Like, I do oh, like yeah. dunks, and then I'm and I'm I'm trying to figure out. The comment section, honestly. Um, so it's definitely a gas from the usual suspects on the Air Max 97s. And it's looking like it's an, an ass, ass, or a pass. I think it's a pass. Yeah, it's a pass on the critical shoes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So it's a pass on those. So you seven. You guys didn't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, I can't, I couldn't, I couldn't rock those. I couldn't. Like uh, so, average together, average together, um, average together. It's a uh, ten. So, Jordy, you walked away with a ten. Um, and so for me, the LeBron Ultimate Warriors. I think they are dope. I wish they would have came in my size. Like, I, I, I like all. I like the whole the whole pack, and I, I I think it's dope. But this was my favorite from that pack, and these are a uh, gas. For me, Jordy, what you got? Let me see him. Text me. Oh. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll come. I'll come back to you. Hell, I uh, can't even see uh, him. I'm on the show. You sending it? You <laughs> send it? You send it? It's the ultimate for you. You're um, there. Yeah, the colorway is dope. I don't like the 14 silhouette, um, so I'm just gonna pass on. If it was on a Kyrie or something, it'd be hella dope. But on the 14s, he got to pass. Hey Dan, you send you send in the picture because my uh, uh, yeah I am my thing is I am messing up. Yeah. All right, Mike, what you got on this? Uh, because I'm trying to secure the bag. A, hey, I'm gonna ask him on purpose. Oh, no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. No, I'm like I'm a gassies. I mean, Ultimate Warrior, man, next to Hulk Hogan, that was my dude. So, and I love these colors. I'm not a big fan of the 14s, but I would actually rock these. It's kind of like those uh, like about to outer nowheres. You about to go I find would... them now? Stock X right now. Crunch my toes in them, you know. Get a shoe horn. Yeah, I'm a gas. I'm a gas. All right, so that's a gas from you and Marcus. I'm, I'm gonna have to pass on them. I don't. I don't know that neon shit. Just don't. <laughs> just I can't do it. All right. Like the Balenciaga the Triple S. Yeah, that's it right there, right? Balenciaga's the shit. Oh, damn, you should get like just like turds with uh, open toe <laughs> sandals and wear them with their Balenciagas. Once again, it goes to your your fashion sense and style, and none of you guys have any, so I don't give a shit what you say. Ma, Ma, Steph Smitty, Steph Smitty says, Ma, I specifically remember you in ATL wishing they came in your size. I would never buy a LeBron 14. So yeah, and these look like those acronym Prestos. Yeah, a little well, bit. Molly is a LeBron. Yeah, he's a LeBron Kevin, hater. Got on I'm a gas him. I like him. Ultimate oh, Warrior was my favorite wrestler, right mm-hmm. next to the Hulk. I mean, how many 14s you got, Kev? Three. How many you got? All right. Z- zero. <laughs> say that All right. So, Jordy, what you got on these? I'll pass. Boom. Pass. All right, and I got. 
a gas from the comment section, so that leaves me with 11. So, that's Lottie Dottie, right? Everybody? So, so that means Mike has won his second round in a row. In a row. And just to make something clear, uh, KB, um, the, uh, the, the females ice blue eight, it came in my size. So I couldn't have, like, I felt like if I said that, like it wasn't going to work right. You know, you know so new and different. Uh, but I, I really do want to track down the ice blue pair as well. Uh, but yeah, congratulations. Shout out to Mo and his, you know, second win of the week or second win in a row. Congratulations. <laughs> Going into the topics. <laughs> topics. <laughs> All right. So who's up first? Who's up first? Uh, we right, go well, Molly's. Well, I got what I wanted to talk about. Mike, my, my bad. I didn't know if you were gonna <clears throat> know what I want to talk about today. Is. Um. <laughs> So I've been hearing a lot, and I've had my own personal experiences with StockX. So they just celebrated StockX Day. They had the usual uh, influencers and whatnot through and and tour the facility and everything. And I've heard of, and this is you know a lot of rumors and what have you, but even had my own experiences with StockX. On the on the back end side, the customer service people are sending uh, authentic shoes, they're getting charged the 15% saying, no, they're not real. They're getting their accounts banned. There's really no explanation outside of that. Um, so I wanted to throw it around the horn. Everyone for the most part here has shoe stock X, um, and just kind of get an idea of what your own personal experiences were. If you had negative ones and kind of just. Well, I'm going to go first because real quick, y'all know, I don't order anything online unless it's just the absolute only way I can get it. So I haven't dealt with StockX yet. So what's that waiting time too long? I have no patience. <laughs> uh, so I, I've uh, never had a bad experience with StockX. So I got a pair of um, LeBron 11 low Chinas, the China white, and they had staining on the, the, ins not the, ins the outsole, right? And they took the time, sent me an email, sent me pictures, corresponded back with me a couple times, um, you know, saying no, they're not dead stock. And they, you know, they sent them after I was like, yeah, that's fine. That little black thing is not fine. So I've never had a problem with them. Then I got a pair of um, South Beach Nines, and they smelled like cigarettes. Bad, like bad. Like I had, I, I have aired that shoe out, cleaned it, and it still has that, like, ashtray smell. So, um, you know, I, I contacted them, and they Are sent me a free... the LeBron ash? <laughs> it, 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 might be, it might be. So, um, I, you know, ultimately, I'd say, and from all my experience with StockX, they, it, it's never, I've never had a problem. I've sold on there. I've purchased on there, and I, I thoroughly enjoy the service and like it, so. So, I'll chime in. So, same thing. I, I, you know, I haven't had any issues per se as far as from the customer service perspective. Um, but I think that begs the differ, Dan. If if something smells like cigarettes, and they're actually authenticating the stuff, how do they go ahead and push that through? Right. If you clearly smelled it like that, that's something that shouldn't have gone through. And that's that's my thing, right? At the end of the day, we're paying for peace of mind. That peace of mind is them simply putting this tab on that says we have authenticated and checked it. There is no way every shoe that has been sent out has been authenticated and checked. I will guarantee my entire salary that has not happened. They have opened the boxes on some, I'm sure, slapped the tag on it and shipped it right out. Just like we were talking about, like those Miss Blue, uh, Miss Blue Fours that me and Molly got. Come on now, realistically, they don't have something in there that's fake to compare it to. So, I mean, let's be realistic. Have I had any issues with the service? No. Have I been burned by them personally? In these services, I don't sit here and say, I'm 100% sold that what I'm getting is not fake. I would definitely never buy Yeezys on StockX or GOAT or any of that stuff because the fakes are just too good. You're not telling me that they're spotting everything. 
So, All right, so here's my question to you. If that's the whole purpose of that service, being a middleman authenticating it, but for the most difficult shoes to authenticate, you can't go to them. What are they really providing? Nothing for that. Nothing. That's just, that. that's, that's my personal opinion. At the end of the day, anybody who's buying these, I would not buy Yeezys from them. I, there's no guarantee that the fakes are just too good. You know, I talked to Shanghai Souls. I mean, he was showing me, I mean, it's just, they're too good. So a product like that, I would not trust on a stock X. I'm not saying anything bad about them. Again, I've had good customer experience, but I don't sit here and put hundred percent trust in any of that stuff because there are too many things that you could do to get over on people. I could tell you several ways to do it. But I'm so why wouldn't you think why would why would you think it would only be a Yeezy? Why wouldn't you think that you can get the same thing on a Jordan? Because you can. Oh, you can, but it's much harder because the fakes are so good. They can fake anything. Not, not really. It's, it's really not. Like I put I copped the Bel Air five. That's untrue. And that's not true. Um, I copped the Bel Air fives, and that's something that you know I want to get looked at, want a second or a third opinion on, because that's a shoe that you know had a really good. There are shoes that I will never buy, i.e. the DB4s, because there are so many fakes floating around the damn. We've had this conversation, you know. Right. So. Right. I, I would not buy. I would not buy a DB4 on any service or any site or anywhere or anything because of that. Um, but unless it was like from like a known collector and they were no selling way. a piece out of their collection, you know, that'd be the only way that I would do that. But I, mean, I tend to not think on the way that. You two do, you know, like, I feel like y'all are almost paranoid. Like I need to get some tin foil and send it to y'all and shit because like, you know, black like, it's serious. just not that serious, man. Like, it's really like I, really, I, I really don't think that people are like, they know there's an authentication service. So that's going to weed out some of the fakes to begin with. People aren't going to send it through. I, I, I know, I know your opinion, Ma. You think every shoe you get is fake. Dude, I, I, get, I, I get... I get a a panic test text message from Ma every time he cops a shoe from StockX that I already have. Hey, can you check this pair for your pair because there was a metal tag and it was hard to get the Velcro strap through and it something, something seemed right. I was like, oh, it's, it's still hard to get it through on mine. But awesome. but I mean, you can buy fake from a, a, a store if you wait exactly. past you wait past the. <laughs> You know, they for them to go on sale. I mean, eventually someone's gonna send them things back, and then who's really checking those? I'd probably trust a person that's at StockX that's you know supposed to look at them over someone at say you know maybe East Bay or something like that, where they're getting back many and many of shoes. They probably look in there and see it's a shoe and and send it you know right back through, and then someone else. I've gotten shoes that look like somebody bought in them before from East Bay because they were on sale, you know, and I'm like. Eh. You know, so I mean, and then you were talking about like with a shoe that smelled like smoke. I mean, you can't tell if it's fake or not from it smelling like smoke. Just somebody might have been a chain smoker at the house. Yeah, that's, I mean, what, that's, that's, that's kind of what I gone through. That just shouldn't have gone through. Nah, but but so but so here's what my opinion is on that. Like I tend to think the best of people. So when, when I was when I was a smoker, I could not tell if somebody else was a smoker or not. I could not smell it, right? But now that I've quit smoking, and yeah, I use my little douche flute or whatever. <laughs> douche flute. But, <laughs> I just called it that. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be fluting Skin the douche flute. here. This thing. Skin um, no, that, that's gross. Um, <laughs> anyway, I, I, I can, I can smell cigarette smoke a little more clearly. So what my guess is, is the guy that went through the authentication process, um, the guy that authenticated my shoes was probably a smoker and just couldn't readily identify the smell on the shoes from the smell on his clothing. So, yeah. you know, like, I, I, t I really don't think that, I mean, like, you There's know that there is constant, you know, flaws on shoes that we buy retail, right? And these little bitty things y'all be tripping out over, tripping out over. So, um, you know, I, 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 tend to, I tend to err on the side of, you know, they yeah, know that. what they're doing. They know what they're doing. But look at it like this, Dan. So, so check this out. Think, think about it like this, right? They're getting so much stuff coming through there. Their whole thing is they want to get it in. They want to turn it over. They want to get it out. I, so I'll give you a prime example, right? So I had a cleaning business. You bid on the contract, $200,000. Somebody comes in, they bid $100,000. they are going to go with the $100,000 knowing that realistically, 
you can't make a profit doing everything they want for a hundred thousand. So what do they do? Once they get in the door, they cut back on all the services that they said they were going to bid that they were going to do so that they can make a profit. So I'm guaranteeing you that, and, and, and I'm not saying that that's their whole MO, but I guarantee you that some of that's going on. Like I'm some shoes, they might sit here and take five minutes on some, they might sit here and take a 10 seconds. Like, whoop, 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 whoop. okay, we're out. They, it's just too much stuff coming in for them to sit here and say, and it's one person check from what I've been told. It's one person checking a shoe. There's too much stuff coming through there that they can spend that kind of time and turn it around and get it out. Now, it looked like they had more than one person checking it. They had different stations on StockX Day <laughs> that I saw. But let's get uh, Jordan's opinion in on it. Yeah, um, I want to hear that as well. You know. I've never bought or sold anything on StockX. That being said, I definitely think that the app and the website are helpful. Um, I think that it's very user friendly and easy to search, like especially if you compare it to eBay or some of the other consignment shops. Like whenever you're searching for something on StockX, you can put in so many different things and it's very intuitive. Um, I have spent a decent amount of time on the website checking out prices of things, which I think is a great feature that they offer. I mean, before StockX, there was no price guide for shoes, and it was really the wild, wild west. I mean, I've been selling shoes on eBay since 2000, and for the first 12 or 15 years of that, there was nowhere for anyone to go to look and see what something's worth. Like, it was just what people are willing to pay for it at that time which is still true but at least like here's a place that actually provides data so i think that it's valuable even though i've never used the service before and i mean so, let me get oh, i'm sorry my bad no, so, i mean I, i've used i've used goat and we all know what what happened there <laughs> so i mean it's it's definitely possible i mean i just haven't run into an issue with stock x like i ran into with goat which but it's it's possible to pick them up retail, just like you were saying, Kevin. I mean, how many how many of us have taken back a pair of shoes that we bought? I'm right. sure everybody has. And when you take them back, how well does the staff check those shoes? Not they at take all. them out the box, look at them, see if they're the same size, see if they've been worn. They put them in the box, they put them back in stock. Do you not think that people put fakes in shoe boxes and take them back intentionally? Right. I know they, they do. Sure they do. I'm sure they so, do. So how how, how can people you people everywhere? How can you put so much concern in one company doing it when it, you can buy them straight out of Foot Locker or anywhere and get the same thing? So, so I'm saying in general, but everywhere. But why worry about it? Why worry about it, though? I'm not worried because I'm still going to buy StockX. I'm just saying I never sit here and say I'm 100% faithful that what I'm getting is legit in anything. For, that, for the same reason that you said as far as with Foot Locker, for Champs, anything, nothing. I don't sit here and say anything is 100% guaranteed. That is not my mindset. I, I will continue to buy from StockX because I like the process. You know, I do think that they do authenticate some stuff, but there's nothing that out there is 100% that I'm saying wherever I buy a shoe from is guaranteed. Zero. I'm sure all of us have at least one fake in our collection that we don't even oh, realize we got. I'm sure. Yeah, I would put the money on it. one goat. <laughs> I'm putting money on it. I Every got one of us got a shoe that we rock that we yep. think legit. Yep. That didn't come from the, the Nike fake market. Say it I need you to so. not say that. It's already 933 on a Monday night. I don't need to go downstairs and look at every single shoe. Yeah, well, you got to yeah, stop yeah. being paranoid about it, dude. Yeah. I mean, it's he's the got shoes. The, the he's got the he's shoes in Jr. over there. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't, I don't lose sleep over it, right? If it's fake, it's fake. I got burned. I'm not, it's not the end of the world. But you're right. I'm probably, I probably got something fake. And there's nothing out there that's 100%. So the word because I'm Tokyo is a suspect looking to me. But, you know, yeah. I ain't gonna say it. It's ninety six percent. Not even ninety eight. Oh, <laughs> that's okay though. I feel like I'm the shit, but you're right. They might. I might just piss away a lot of money on them. Yeah, them Tokyo four dot nine. I, mean, I, I think and Tokyo drifts. I, I, I think the, the the idea of authentication will scare away most people who could probably get away with it on eBay or yeah. selling at sneaker shows. Yep. Where like 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 the smaller sneaker shows that don't have the authentication tables, you know, they're they're, they're not going to come through. And I, I know Maul disagrees, and I, I see him shaking his head. He's shaking his head so much that the camera focuses on him. Um, it's going to scare away most of the fakes. Now some may get shipped through, but then they get shipped back. Like I've tried to purchase a pair, and then I got in the email the pair that you attempted to purchase um, was not guaranteed legit. 
I know that that person was charged twenty five twenty five dollars or something like that 50%. because they missed the deal and yeah and then and then I'm pretty sure they were banned from the the service so right, supposedly yeah supposedly well, I don't know for sure but like what he he's froze okay uh, hey um uh, no Jor Jordan's got a he's got to hop off here uh man I just want to thank you for coming on man I definitely appreciate you we go we go on long here. Uh, but man, thank you for for coming on and uh, and dropping that knowledge on us and being part of the show today. Definitely. Guys, thank you a lot for having me. I'm sorry I have to take off early. I got to get to the post office and get all these packages out before they close. Uh, no worries, man. Any any else or final words? Just thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Thank you for coming on. We, thank, thank, you. You. thank you for coming on. It was nice talking yeah. to you guys. All Thanks. right, man. Take care. Right. We'll be take in touch. Care, boss. Talk to you later. Bye. Not the first guest. Right. So I mean, I just, I truly think that there's, there's, there's going to be a certain amount of like. No, I think there's like that, this. that amount of money that's that's flowing through. Like people get tempted. Yeah. You you get a shoe for a, a steal, because they buy and sell their own inventory. So there's an inherent conflict of interest. So I buy a shoe with the steal. You get it. You're like, oh shoot, you pay next to nothing. Oh nope, it's fake. You ban this poor fool, or don't, or maybe don't even ban them. You're just like, all right, yeah, we'll complete the transaction, and then you you throw it on a site and you sell it for you know one and a half to two times more. Yeah, you know, I just, I, I I know your inherent like skepticism. I just I, I don't I don't see it there. Like, you know, anytime a fake gets out and it gets back to them, and like somebody posts that shit up, you know, it's gonna spread like wildfire. And the minute that they it's start to yeah, like it's gonna, like they don't want to have to do damage control, so it 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 is in their best interest. It would behoove them to ensure the uh, you know within the the normal realm of human possibility, right. the fakes don't get through. You know, so I'm sure there is one checks, two checks before they go out. You know, Mike, uh, J you know Mike, Holy Grail Jenkins, Holy just Grail. said he had two pairs. Two pairs that haven't shipped, they won't ship to him. I had two pairs. They oh, cannot I, risk I, that. And, and I had the uh, the K fifty four, the twos, that that got sent back. They said they were fake, but right. So you know, and like the idea, the idea that you know, the, it's just they, in a, in such an environment as a sneaker culture, right, where fakes are, you know shunned and complete like the minute you get caught with fakes it's you lose all that credibility and with this when the sneaker market that is so fickle with that right you cannot fuck that up you can't do it the minute you do that eh, that's three four it's five I, i've lost track you can't do it so you know well let's it, yeah. it's in their best interest financially and you know within this culture to ensure the maximum amount you know, to like the within the best possibility, like whatever that is, they don't get through. Well, right. So once they get, but think about it like this: there are two things I'll say. Most people, once they get their shoe, are not sitting here second guessing if it's fake or not because they're assuming that it's been checked. So, and the other thing is, let's say hypothetically you did get a fake shoe, Dan. Right? If you got a fake shoe, you're going to complain to them, and they're going to do their best to resolve it quickly. You're not going to sit there and air them out that they had fakes on your IG page because they handled it and they got back to you and they corrected the issue. Goat does. So if that has happened on certain, you know, if that has happened where maybe you get one fake and they resolve it, you're happy with that because they caught it. You say, oh, you know what? Fine. You resolved it. You gave my money back, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to blast them and put it out there to everybody that they're selling fakes because they resolved it. Now, if you got four or five pair, maybe then you would because you would question their process. But on the flip side, like I said, most people, once they get their shoe, unless like we talk about it, nobody's going to question if it's fake or not because yeah. that's their job. That's when they're doing their job. So I go, I didn't question I check, that. I check and, that and ultimately, Dan, you're thinking, you're thinking big picture, right? So do I think, I think it was a Jeff Lubio and uh, Dan Gilbert, who are the actual owners, hopefully I got the other uh, first name right. Yeah. Level, those people are going to try to make sure that everything is done correctly. I'm not worried about what's happening in management in middle management, I'm worried about what's happening at the ground level where people aren't making as much and they have an opportunity to make extra dollars. 
Right, but so I, I'm sure that legit checkers are not getting, you know, basic pay. Like there has to be, like you've got, they're not getting paid minimum wage. Like, because that, it's like, it's like people in the army. They don't allow you to work in intelligence if you have credit issues, right? Like they run your credit before you ever get around to getting that clearance, right? Yeah. Like you can't even get a security clearance in the army if you have bad credit because that means that you have the ability to be bought, mm-hmm. right? So what they're not going to do is hire people at minimum wage to legit check shoes, you know, because of that specific reason. They're going to have money issues that come into their corruption, and you can't have that. Not in this culture. Not in sneakerhead culture. You cannot do it. You know, the minute they the minute they are known for processing fakes or sending fakes out, you're going to have that issue, and you know, you lose all credibility. And can you? It's so hard to gain credibility that you, it's, it's almost impossible to get it back in this culture, in this, you know, environment. Well, look you know, at Go, Kev had this fake, and I'm yeah. sure Go is still so driving, so money flowing in and out. Yeah, they didn't right. do shit. I'm, right, but they also sell used shoes, like StockX only sells DS. StockX has that deal with Supreme now. They also deal with Louis Vuitton, so they're dealing with higher name brands. Yeah. All right, some could say that they're wearing themselves in as well. Right, so there there has to be a certain like if these if these large the jack of all trades and master of none. But I think that no, stock I mean, like, has that a few more resources. To call me down for my job was in the army, but I don't think the same people that are authenticating shoes are authenticating Louis V or right. Supreme. Oh, stuff. Right. I'm sure that's different, right? That's like what Poshmark. one would hope. Poshmark, I'm sure they got somebody else doing. Person. You know, Rolexes are coming through. There has to be a different person. There, there has to be a thing. Of course. But then again, not necessarily. When you look at like places like you know Urban Necessities, where JC sells kicks as well as he carries Supreme stuff and all that, he has the same guys. He doesn't say, okay, well let's take this over here to this guy and let him check that out. You know, so not necessarily do we have to have different people. You know, just like Fake Ed, he you know he looks at all different types of products, not just sneakers. So I mean, I don't see where it would really be too much different with StockX. Would you rather pay multiple people or pay one guy a little extra? I, I, I guess it wouldn't really matter. I mean, honestly, I bet. I mean, of course, one one person. Yeah, you pay one person. Yeah, but you have everything relying on that one person, though. I think you probably want to have multiple people in order to I mean, have. A yeah, I'm, set of, of course. I'm, I'm sure with as much stock as they get in, they've got multiple people looking at it. I mean, I'm sure, as, you know, goes down an assembly line where you know two, three, four different people look at the same product. You know, I mean, that's the smart thing to do. They do pay they, now. They do pay they, out fast because. I mean, like, I can send out a pair of shoes on a yeah. Tuesday. I'm paid by Wednesday. And well, once they like, get in authenticate it, you're good. Yeah, right. well, yeah, they'll they'll get the shoe, and then I'll get a, a email saying that they have the shoe. I'm like, it'll be five minutes sometimes, and boom. Right. Really? I mean, it's because I'm legit. I'm just playing. <laughs> how long? <laughs> how long? How long does a? I mean, that's the thing. How long does a legit check really? Hey, right. I mean, you, you had your OVOs looked at. We, you know, we, well, once over. I mean, did you get satisfaction out of it? Absolutely not. <laughs> and I'm sure that's what's happening. But you, and you never will. And he never will. We have, <laughs> we have researched the dog shit out of that shoe specifically. <laughs> I have pulled up everything that I can. I, I like. We have sit there and just talked and texted and shared pictures back and forth about this shoe. And then he'll pull out the UV light and like, oh, that's it. I got him. I got him. <laughs> blue mark, man. Like, you're like that's holy shit. There's a glue mark on. The, like, it's 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 crazy. There, the, you know, th- there's there's a, like the Yeezys. Like, so like scares. Like, it took about a week to authenticate the Yeezys you got from there. Now, I get that because they're it's a fabric shoe glued to a. It, there's not a lot. You know, it just there's not a lot. There's not a lot of the shoe. But like with the Jordan, there's like there's very specific stitch lines and very specific this and they. Like he goes above and beyond and trying to make it, you know, easy to tell authentic versus fakes, you know. So it's mind numbing to some extent where it, it just gets me sometimes with this because I'm just I don't really get into conspiracy. Um, you know, I don't I don't. <laughs> it's a conspiracy for you. You know it is. You think it's some like massive conspiracy? And I just I, I tend to disagree. Uh, I don't. I don't underestimate people's greed. Um, I. 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 
assume that the company has a product that they want to maintain, that they have an overhead that they want to continue to be paid, right? And so it doesn't make sense for them to allow just any old person, like they're going to hire my 13-year-old daughter to go in there and legit check shoes. Like I'm sure there has to be a process for these people to get picked up. I mean, you hope so. I'm sure they're trained, I would hope. All right, what? Well- Here's another theory, since you like conspiracies, or that does. I mean, you have StockX data for people to come in and and look at the operation and be like, oh my God, this experience was so great. Look what they do. They authenticate. They do that. They do this. They do that. You got all these big YouTubers that come in. They've got their videos and their vlogs. Here I am at Secret Guy, or here I am at StockX Day. Ha ha ha. And then that puts a, a bigger shadow. Oh, legit, 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 legit. Meanwhile, they're just popping out up, up, one every five, one every 10. You know? Mm-hmm. If we get caught, StockX, call us. We're looking for sponsors. <laughs> so, Listen, I had, that being I, said, I wait, 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 let me promise. That being said, I've given StockX a lot of money this year. I'm just saying that I go right. the extra length once I get the shoe to be comfortable with the purchase because I'm not paying retail. You know, I'm paying I'm paying resale value. I'm paying two, three x what the shoe you know was released at. So, I yeah, I want to make sure that I'm getting an authentic product. Okay. So you're right. We disagree. All right. I don't know if you're we'll, we'll agree to disagree. Yeah, we can let this one go. We'll pick it up later. <laughs> <laughs> so we got what? StockX, the new Scoop 208. See, that's oh. what I'm saying. Like, like, all of a sudden, it just, like, it, it only takes one. Read the articles of StockX. It might say that they're 98% accurate. <laughs> you know, like, I'm sure, I'm sure there's a percentage. I'm sure that, that, that it has to be somewhere listed, you know, but. I'm. I just. I have. I have to have faith that the system works. Right, listen. Uh, forget faith. I have to have uh, faith in people. Proof. And, and all politicians are I'm proof. <laughs> all right. So, before I lose my cool insert, like, <laughs> email, like, I'm just gonna mail you motherfuckers aluminum foil by the case. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm so past it. And like y'all. Watch out for the second shooter on the grassy knoll. You know, the space landing was faked and, you know, the the, the world's ran by fucking lizard people. You know? <laughs> Nobody's saying that that's their MO. I'm just saying there is, I'm sure there is some of that that's in. Oh, so, I'm sure there has to be human error, but, you know, y'all, y'all lack faith. Thieves. Yeah. Man, so anyway, what, yeah. what do y'all want to do, first? man? Do y'all want to go, do y'all want to talk about? Yeah, go to hashtag hero. All right, let's go. Because we got 13 minutes. Can I come in, little T? Sure, big T. Let us trust trusting as you, Dan. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, yeah. Go with the hashtag hero. It is. We're here. Okay, cool. All right, once again, hashtag. We're going to do the hashtag hero. We're going to do it just like we have been. We are going to go from left to right, clockwise. We're going to start with pick number one with the top threes. All my kicks dope. Uh, who picked that one? That's my pick. Uh, I can't see it. There it is. You got it now? <laughs> uh, Julian, all my kicks dope. This this shot is crazy, man. All this stuff is meticulous, man. So um, that's my hashtag hero for the week. Okay. If you've ever shot, if you've ever shot with this guy, you know it's super meticulous. Like everything is 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 so particular. Put your foot like this. Hold this light. Hold on to this burrito. I'm like, but you can't even see the burrito. It's like, just hold on to it. It makes sense later. You'll understand. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, okay, dude. I'm like, all right. You in know. that picture, I had a burrito in my hand, bro. <laughs> you, can, you don't even know. You don't even know. You see? Yeah. Um, <laughs> All right, next we got a newcomer. Uh, uh, we got Skinny Jeans, Skinner 32, Michael Skinner with the uh, LeBron 15s. Who picked that one? That was I. That, to me, that picture's sick. That, that's my favorite pick I saw on IG. And Dan's was a close second with his his pitch, picture of the ghost. Yeah, but Skinner's angles, though, man, they're, they're unparalleled. Yeah. Man, this picture right here is, is like it. Yes, I mean... I, I, and it made me fall in love with this shoe even more. So 
<laughs> Thanks oh, for you, man. Scare. I'm probably going to be trying to go find this. You got hit this by the Cupid there. I see. Yeah, he, he did. <laughs> oh. No, that that that, <laughs> that shot of the the fifteen is is super dope. Long like, I, 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 that, you know, it, it is. is ridiculous. I, I hate to admit, it. I really do. And the thing is, like you said, he's got his own style. That you could tell, it's his picture. Oh, hundred so. yeah. percent. You already know. You see a unique angle or something like that. Yeah. The one that he's shooting, yeah, it, you already know. It, the editing, the editing on it is on point. Like everything about that picture was premeditated and done well. So it's awesome. Um, Think about it. One of these days, he'll bring his sorry ass out so we can shoot together and he can teach me, but it's all oh, good. We're supposed to link up this weekend. You didn't get the invite? Of course not. No, nobody wants to shoot with me. My pictures are shit, but anyway. I'm, I'm about to be uh, shooting my jacket, so. There you go. You need a little tiny violin. <laughs> so next. All right. All right. Next up, Stop. we got these kicks with my favorite. Who, pick, uh, who picked that one? Concords. Of course, that was me. That was Velo. Uh, so, wanted to go with someone new. Obviously, you know, we talked about the 11 re-releasing. Um, this is, like you said, Mike, a lot of people's favorite. So, mm. shout out my hashtag hero. Yes, yes, me, you did it. You did it. Thank you, thank you. Uh, me, I went with the J team, tagging up, loving respect, going back to back with the six. Yeah, that's dope. Once again, dynamic duo, putting it out there. This is my hashtag hero, hashtag heroes. For the week, I'm going to go lean more towards Lady J because John be getting on my nerves, but we ain't going to talk about that. <laughs> and <laughs> no, but seriously, you guys killed this picture as always. So that's my hashtag hero. And then uh, last, we got my man Lou, BK to AZ with the Dave White. So I, this is my hashtag hero. And I, I know that he just came up with the, the Gucci belt one the other day, but the, I, this picture was just bananas. Like the you have the black, red, and, right, black, red, and white. Um, Dave White's, and then you have it in the background too. It's just too much. So I, I just I, I love 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 this shot. Yeah, um, too much south. So, so dope. Yeah, that was bananas. So you know, shout out to B2K or B2K. B2K. <laughs> oh shit. Or Marion. I, 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 I always I always fuck that up. <laughs> Another uh, That's bomb number. <laughs> <laughs> Another. One's Keith right Edding told me that one. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so done at trying to stay there. I'm, I'm yeah. trying. Um, uh, so. Okay, thought about it. So that's uh, so that's everybody. So <laughs> that's why you my hitter. <laughs> All right, so vote. Let's do the board. Let's go. Roll. Woo-hoo. I'm voting well, for I'm, mine. I'm, 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 I'm sticking with mine. I mean, and I anybody that don't vote on that one, there's something wrong with y'all. I'm voting on mine. I'm keeping mine too. Yeah. You go ahead. All right, Ma. Oh, now you got to come back to me. Ma? You know, <clears throat> honestly, <clears throat> as much as it changed me, I'm gonna have to go with Skinner <clears throat> on this one. V was gonna get the, V was gonna get the vote because Concord is my favorite all time. But I'm not gonna lie. Looking at this picture, I actually kind of, sort of want to get these, even though I'm still not gonna get them. You gonna get them? Uh, I ain't getting these, man. Sold. Hey. But- but but the but the picture is nice. He killed the picture. So shout out to you, Skinner. I, I, unfortunately, I'm giving you my vote. Uh, I need a coin. Hey, J Team, I still love y'all, by the way. So don't don't unfollow me. I so I was arguing. So like, I love I love um, BK to AZ. I always want to say B2K. Like always. Um, <laughs> BK to AZ. Uh, I love that picture. But it, for me, it's between Julian's picture and or so all my kicks dope. Mm-hmm. and Skinner it's between those two um, and just because like I, I have to go with Skinner on this one I have to um, it's just such a clean shot and that the tint is or like the, the colors are right on the picture it's just it's beyond dope like I, I love that picture yeah um, he did straight it, up. he killed it and yeah. then and, and Mike kind of killed the picture by putting in that little ass box like that. I know I know but, you know, yeah, adjusted, but go listen. everybody go look at if you're not following Skinner 32, go go check yeah, him. Do follow, yeah, follow all my kicks, kicks dope too. I mean, yeah, everybody, everybody, oh, yeah. everybody. I mean, this week was like the toughest one, and I ain't trying to shit right. on the previous week, but I mean, y'all came with some heat for real. No, nah, there was, so, yeah, there was some really, really great shots. Yeah, I mean, it was um, something that didn't even make it that's killing. Yeah, that was, that was super yeah. dope. And 
Um, you know, I'm sitting here going back and forth and forth and back and back and forth. And uh, as much as it pains me to say, I think I'm going to have to go with Skinner's as well. Despite the fact that it's a LeBron, um, I'm going to give him the dub. I actually do want to try a pair of 15s on. I saw them in, in Sneaker Uh-oh. Con HBO. And um, so I'm curious to give him a shot. I want to play in them. I, w- I definitely want to check out the performance. And this shot is just, it's just killer. Man. You know what? I think we're going to be friends. Let's cover this before we move on to the next. Because they always do that. They always go to the shout outs. Strawberry oatmeal. Strawberry oatmeal. Strawberry oatmeal is an option. There's retractable toes. There's another option. There's douche flute. These are not for touching. Is another oh, one. Yeah. These are not for touching. You got to keep it shorter. But I did like that one. Yeah, that's long. Yeah. Douche flute. All right. Um, Douche flute. No, I don't like the D flute. Well, Strawberry oatmeal. Strawberry oatmeal. I like these are not for touching. That's a lot. <laughs> these are not. For I like stop fucking with Paw Paw. Jeez. Wait. I like, I like, insure, insure me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm a, oh, they're for touching. They're for the touching. They're for the touching. Oh, they're not there for the touching is what it was. Yeah. Um, That's kind of long. Douche flute has been used, but I feel like the, the, I, I went and checked the pictures and they're not as much so, but I mean, like right now, <laughs> hold this burrito. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> So what about, what about Polo Polo the Don? Hashtag Polo the Don. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I, already, I, I, already been, I already been using that, you know. But I mean. Polo the Don. The Don. Polo the Don. Polo the Polo the Don has one thousand four hundred and forty three posts. I that Let's that see. Man. Hold <laughs> this burrito. Put yeah, Polo Polo's the Don. Yeah, there's there are no results for hold this burrito. Yeah. So shout out shout out to Eros, um, hold this burrito. I, I like that one. It's, it's in burrito is the segment. B-U-R-R-E-B-U-R-R-I-T-O. I-T-O, yeah, about to say if you spell it right, it definitely won't be in context. Hold this burrito. He's a music producer, and I love it too, Ryan. I appreciate the fact that somebody wanted to give me that that name, Polo the Don, and I'm gonna wear that title well. We'll take it. We'll take it and run. I am. Hold this burrito. So, ladies and gentlemen of the usual suspects, ensure that you use hold this burrito. Um, I would like to do the um, what was it? What was the hashtag? No invite. Mm-hmm. I'd like to do some um, honorable uh, runners up. Yeah, honorable mentions. All right, I like it. There are, yeah, there are like so. There, there's one with this dude who be talking and stuff, and it's weird. But we're just gonna have to go. It's just it weirds me out a bit. But we're gonna do it anyway. All right, so. Uh, share. All right. So click that one. Oh, Oop. what? What the hell? That dude dead? <laughs> yeah, I know. No, he's not dead, but he, he goes on and talks about, like, all this stuff. So, uh, Ryan Swinger, shout out to you. Uh, oh, oh, no. Yeah. A-Rose with this beautiful ben, shot. Ben. The Sneaker RX, there you are with those shoes that oh. aggravate me. I got to get both. I this guy. Uh, <laughs> these things, New York State of Mind did an amazing job. Like this picture that had me, these pictures right here had me wanting to purchase these shoes today. Like I was like, you know, my kids don't necessarily need food. Uh, <laughs> half cast. So this picture, shout out to Half Cast. This picture hit eleven thousand seven hundred nineteen likes. Yeah. Like this Killed picture it. blew up. It's super clean with the G Shock, uh, KB Fresh Kicks. There you are. Uh, another picture of BK Yeah, I can't. I don't want to mess. Up. Whoever that is. Oh yeah. Huh? That is. Hey! hey! That's it right there. That's the, that's the hashtag hero winner right there. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, there's those right there. You know, so you know, shout out to everybody. Oh, and you know, see who is this? Um, Sneakerhead Clothing Line. Shout out to him. Make sure y'all are following him. Jason. Yeah, go, Jason. go give Jason a follow. Go ahead. Um, Is that Ricky Retro? And then we have Two Fly Souls right there with the Doran Becker Air Max 95s. Yeah, they go Ricky um, Retro. With, I think that's Ricky Retro there. right here. Yeah. Shout out to him, man. He's he's a he's a really, OG. really cool dude. Triple OG. Hey. And, and so with that. Abbott Porter. 
Let me see if there's an echo, because sometimes there'd be echoes. No, so. you're good. It's only when Mike does it. The mic right, cool. the phone. Hello, hello. So, the hashtag for next week is hold this, hold this burrito. Hold this so make burrito. Sure that, hold, hold this, this burrito. Make hold sure you're using the hashtag. You can win yourself a little uh, a little gift bag from Rejuvenator. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mom. All right, y'all. Well, usual suspects, appreciate you for joining us for yet another week. Uh, next week, we do have the perfect pair. It's going to be another great episode. October is coming to a close. We think we did it big, and uh, we're about to do it bigger. So we got November and then December. Last show is going to be December 18th. That'll be the wrap of season one, and then we're coming back strong for season two, uh, January 15th. So obviously, there'll be plenty of promo going out to keep you guys informed, uh, but you get an early preview of that. Uh, shout out to Jordan for joining us. Uh, Shoesium, obviously, he had to go, but we really do appreciate him coming by and dropping some knowledge. Um, shout out to uh, shout out to Sneakerheads Clothing Line once again. Uh, shout out to everyone who who shout us out in the story. Uh, ben, uh, Witness the King, uh, Gorilla, who posted the the team pick. So uh, that's you guys, the real MVP. Zelo, KB Fresh Kicks, Funky Lace, Sneaker X, yeah. all of them. Get us up. Yep. yep. Much better. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to the usual suspects, uh, you know, for <laughs> tuning in a couple hours, you know, hanging with us during the week. All the other good stuff. Come on, Eeyore. I know, right? so excited. You think Jeez, it sounds so Christ. excited. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Shout out to Usual Suspects, boom, uh, for hanging with us. Uh, definitely, you know, feeling the support uh, as well as everybody who's been sending me pictures for the breast cancer awareness. We're coming towards the end, so we have, what, eight more days. I think I got a few picks, but I'm probably a few picks short, so if you have not sent me a pair of your pink shoes, sure, let please me know. send them to me. I know, Molly, I got another one for you going up, uh, but I'm trying to get as many people as I can in there. So send me your picks. We're going to close it out strong. I appreciate the support. Support. If you have not downloaded the Unbox app, please do so. Um, got a couple things coming up. Got us a couple of snacks, so we're gonna work through some stuff. But I'll put that out there later. And again, thanks for you guys. You know, for you know, talking. You know, through everything for the week, everything you guys. Oh, we're after ten. Yeah, thanks to you guys. I'll talk to y'all later. Let's go. <laughs> yes! like Mike. Yes! like Mike's latest pick. Yes! <laughs> go ahead, Dan. You next. All right. All right. Um, yeah, so shout out to Shoeinator, our sponsor for the show. Um, you can use the product code Monday Midsole and get yourself 10% off your entire purchase. They have cleaners, a laundry system, which works, and I still haven't, still haven't washed those ultra boosters sitting right there, but I get to them eventually. Collapsible bowls, brushes, cleaner, water repellent, everything you can need to keep your shoes clean so make sure you go get your product from then there's also the smell good stuff shoe and foot deodorizer so make sure you use a product code monday midsole go check them out there's the links is in the description down below as always and i got some other things coming so i will pass it off to big kev man all right uh shout, did you shout out eight nine Chris, you you did uh, shout out shout out to eight nine uh you can go ahead and check their uh, link out, like I said earlier, in the uh, description and use that code and uh, save yourself some money. Also, um, as Molly said, shout out to everybody who uh, shared the show. Um, I think he went through everybody, so I don't really have to get into that. But I, I need to start you know, writing, uh, writing everybody down so I can make sure I can mention your names on here. Uh, but everybody, join our, uh, join our Facebook group. I like to open up some conversations, you know, throughout the week so, you know, we can kind of bring that into the show um, because I know that I, it's hard for me to watch the, the chat as much uh -oh. as, uh-oh, uh -oh. you got, we're back, we're back, we're yeah, back, all right, all right, yeah. all right. Uh, it's hard for me to watch the chat as much as I'd like to, so, um, you know, join our Facebook group and, we, you know, we'll get into some discussions there and then we'll bring that into the show um, and definitely mention you if you're the source of whatever topic we decide to choose. Um, but shout out to our sister shows, uh, Talking Kicks. You can catch them Wednesdays at 8.30 to 10 o'clock. Um, definitely uh, check them out. They've been doing some good stuff. Um, also, Sneaker Files. Um, 
they had they do a Wednesday show, but they also do Thursday live. And this week, last week they canceled it. This week, uh, I think it's back on on uh, seven o'clock, and I will be on that one. So check it out, show some support, stop throughs, talk about some sneakers with uh, Canada or whatever. <laughs> but um, and then also shout out to the Sneaker Box podcast uh, with uh, African Caesar, Francis, Jumpman. Well, Jumpman's. He's doing something else right now, but uh, you know he's he's part of the team, Guru, and everybody else, White Ranger. Let's go! All right. Well, shout out to my three brothers and my my sister Mike. <laughs> Appreciate y'all. <laughs> All y'all do. <laughs> uh, y'all came through for your boy today. You know my little post I put up, and everybody came in there and you know looked out for your boy. You know sometimes the old man leaves a little support, and I appreciate y'all for looking out. Uh, shout out Shazam for coming on, you know, big fan. And next week, man, we got my favorite sneakerhead of all time coming on the show. I'm super pumped for the perfect. I'm already on. What are you about? So, I'm on here. So make sure y'all tune in next week. The show is going to be probably one of our, our best ones. So make sure you're here to check it out. And with that, love y'all. We we'll see y'all next week. Peace out. Let's go over here. Just you and me. I just wanted to say thanks. I'm glad you came along, partner.